All right, good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Bow District football game between your fighting farmers and the Caddo Mills Foxes. Brought to you live from TA Cotton Ford Stadium over here in Greenville. I am Brian Brazel, graduate of Farmers of High School in 1994, and joining me tonight is the illustrious Tony Gray, graduate of Farmersville in 1995. Tony, thanks for joining us. Thank you, Brian. Glad to be here. Absolutely. So we're in for what we hope should be a, a really good game tonight between your farmers who finished second in District 5. I'm sorry, finished third in District 5 with a 3-3 three and three record. Playing Caddo Mills, who finished second in District 6 with a 4-1 and one record over there. And if you believe in common opponents, opponents Tony, uh, we had two this year, Community, mm -hmm. who we both beat. Right. And then we had Crum, who Farmersville beat in one of the best games of the year in overtime. And Crum actually beat Caddo Mills this year. So right. you can use that common opponent angle, and a lot of people do. But if you think about it, we had Bridgeport, who we got beat by, and then Crum and Gainesville beat Bridgeport, and we beat Crum and Gainesville. So, right. But it does tell you, though, based on just that alone, that the teams could match up well tonight here in, in Greenville. Well, certainly not. You know, I don't think we'll see a game like we saw maybe three years ago when we played them in uh, – they kind of mop, yeah. mop the floor with yes. us a little bit. Yeah. So uh, I don't expect to see that that outcome. I do think it's going to be a good game and, and one the Farmers can win. Well, let's talk a little bit about both of these teams. We've obviously, we know Farmersville really well. We've watched them all year long, um, averaging 33 points a game. You know, they came out of the gates really hot on offense. Uh, therefore, you know, middle of the, you get into district playing some of those opponents that have seen a lot of film on you, um, had a small little lull there over a game or two. But ended up finishing, you know, averaging 33 points a game. And we've done it both ways. We, we started off, we were averaging over 300 yards a game rushing to start the season. Last couple of games, we've been throwing the ball a little bit more as they've stacked the box against us. So Farmersville's offense has shown they can, they can score in, in different ways. For and sure. With, with different, you know, we've, uh, we've got, a, I can't remember how many, I think it was six different kids who've scored touchdowns this year um, on the ground for Farmersville. And five through the air. So there's a there's a lot of kids out there that can when you get, they get their hands on the ball they can put it in the end zone, for sure. And you know, really one game this year was just kind of out of reach, and that was the last game. And you know, Aubrey's dang good football team, and you know, I, I'm not sure we beat them right now. Sure. You know, we're sure. still trying to grow this program and, and get back. Uh, but they've been you know very good and in contention every game. Yep. I told Quinlan after that that loss, I said, hey man. Seven and three before it started, That's, would have took it. Oh, absolutely. So you these boys that, have something to be proud of. Completely agree. Well, and against, you know, getting that Aubrey game, there's really nothing to be won by winning that game. No. The seating so was it's hard to pump yeah. up and really gauge anything. And you don't try a lot of new stuff because you don't want to put it on film it, it right before been the playoffs. It should have been 10 to nothing at half. Yep. And, yep. you know, you, it kind of slipped away. You're exactly right. Uh, yep. And that's, yeah, it, the score wasn't indicative of the kind correct. of game that it was, correct. for sure. So well, let's talk about, you know, Cattle Mills a little bit. They Offensive average in almost 40 points a game, but really it revolves around one player. Right. And that is their quarterback, Gonzalez. He's, he's a junior, Alfonso Gonzalez, who's averaging 336 yards of all-purpose yards per game, which is, which I went back and looked with ranks like number eight in the area right now. Right. So it all revolves around him. And he does it on the ground. He averages 104 yards on the ground, 232 yards through the air, 23 touchdowns, five interceptions. He is their offense, right? right. And so it's one of those kind of games where if you can keep him in the pocket and l not let him get out where he's able to pick up that yardage on, you know, with his legs. And if we can put a little bit of pressure on him because Cattle has, they've given up some sacks this year. That can change the game quite a bit. For you know? sure. And, you know, I, I think he's probably better with his legs than his arms. So if you can keep him in that pocket, contain him a little bit, uh, force a punt or two, yep. you know, it, it's anybody's game. But that's going to be the key. Our running game uh, is going to be huge. We're going to have to have our running game. It, it's kind of slipped away from us. Like you say, teams have seen enough film now. Uh, but we've got to have that running game. And if we have that where we can, you know, just – Kind of, kind of do what we want. Kind of control the clock throwing, a little bit, yep. Yep. and then you know, like I say, contain that quarterback just a tad. Uh, things, things could go in our favor if we keep. Yeah, if we can keep ourselves in a second or third and manageable situation where you're not behind the sticks with the second and ten, second and eleven, and having to get you know into uh, your playbook a little bit and control the clock and like you say, control that ground game. 
then farmers can play with with these guys for sure. There's no doubt. I mean, cattle gives up 29 points a game, so they've given up a lot of points yeah. this year. Um, and so, and some of those were on. I, for example, when they got beat by Crum, Crum threw for 350 yards against them and only 12 completions. And so they well, they, they better guard Arden Cox. Arden, I was going to say that was my very <laughs> he'll next have point. 300 yards by himself. That was my so. very next point. Is like you know when you've got a weapon like that against a susceptible defense like theirs, then uh, that's something we're going to... Well, sometimes, gonna, you know, and we'll see, sometimes you'll find a mismatch and, you know, it, it doesn't matter. Like, take, take, stop find, it. And find so a way to take advantage. That's exactly right. We'll, we'll certainly find out if they'll be able to or not. We're going to take a quick break here for the National Anthem, and then we'll bring you guys the uh, opening kickoff as soon as we're done. It is almost kickoff time here in Greenville in this bi district game. It does uh, it does feel good to play meaningful football after the regular season. So yeah, it's been four years for Farmersville since they made it to the playoffs, and uh, that was a rough one back then in nineteen <laughs> yeah. getting to play Gilmer in the first <laughs> I round. Say Gilmer in the first yeah, round. Yeah, uh, that's tough for anybody in any year. But yeah, I completely agree with you. Coach Quinlan and his crew. He and I've talked about this in the coaches' show a couple of times. Is there's a really big difference between having a good team and having a good program. Yes. And Quinlan is, he's been able to develop both. Yeah. You know, he's put together um, a really good team. You don't get in the playoffs without one. And then, you know, we're winning at the lower levels too. And yeah. so he's, and he's creating this culture and this excitement. So it's a lot of fun to see the farmers be able to, uh, to play, like you say, it's some meaning, meaningful football here in the playoffs. Well, programs is, is, is the key there. And if you just look at the volleyball program, yep, yep. Uh, you know, softball, baseball yep. to a certain extent. Completely agree. And success breeds excitement, which is, you know, kids want to do it, you know, from the early age. And uh, I, I like where we're at, and I think he may be a little bit ahead of schedule. So, yep, completely uh, agree. Well, tonight's opening kickoff is going to be brought to you by Adam Jackson and Farmers Insurance along with his son, Wyatt, who's a future farmer. Appreciate Adam and Wyatt and their support. Looking forward to seeing Wyatt on this field pretty soon. Brian, we have a uh, prediction from Matthew Wilson, 35-7 farmers. Let's do it, Matthew. Right. Josh Ivey tees it up for the Foxes, and it is playoff football time. That's going to be taken uh -oh. Oh, at about the 15-yard line as Arden Cox catches it off of the tip. They're going to say his knee went down there, though. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Arden probably did not call that, probably should have. So you had one backing up there and, yep. and tried to make a play on it. Yep. But lucky to maintain possession yep. there, really. Yeah, I completely agree. That could have been a, whew, a really bad first play. But no harm, no foul there as the Farmers are going to take over from their own 20-yard line. You get a chance to see what Coach Howard and this Farmersville offensive, you know, what kind of game plan they put together. Do you stick with that 
um, pound them mentality, you know, and see how they stack the box against you? Or do you do you try to open it up from the very beginning? So, Well, we look like on the, the left side of the line, we, we should have the advantage size-wise, and we do like to run off of that left side. Um, Quick little play action pass here to Arden Cox. Going to pick up about three or four there. So you would mentioned that. They kind of fake it to that side of the line, come back across the – the field to the right side and get that into that playmaker's hands, Arden, that you had talked about. Yeah. So quick catch and uh, three-yard gain there for the Farmers will bring up second and seven from the 23 as they get into their play quickly. Caden Johnson slides over into motion. They do go to that left side that you mentioned, Tony. That's Reyes pushing the pile. Look at that right there. Yes. That is a nice hard run there. That's going to be a first down there for the Farmers. Good. Reyes, 1,000-yard rusher on the season. <laughs> Averaging 140 yards a game. Had a couple of games over 200 yards earlier in the season, and that's a – going back to what you said, you know, controlling it on the ground, that's a great way to start there. Yeah, you, you – like I said, if we control – if we have that run game, uh, like I said, this, this thing will go our way. Another handoff to Reyes up the middle. He's going to be brought down after about a two-yard gain there. Coach Pryor always wanted three yards on every play. That's right. He said he went every game to get three part, three yards every play, right? That's right. That's Gavin Barabas on the tackle for the Foxes, which will bring up third and eight. I'm sorry, second and eight here for the Farmers. They're going to stay in their three-receiver set. Reyes in the backfield behind Norman. As Johnson slides over in motion, fakes to Reyes, goes to Johnson in the flat. That's He's a- brought down immediately there by number 25. That's Logan Heath on the tackle for the Foxes. But, again, you like the play call as far as – Showing the run, yeah, getting it into Caden's hands, and that that play we've ran it a couple of times this year, not able to connect. That time they were, but uh, Heath and the Foxes were uh, right there where they needed to be. Right, you know, Caden, it's crazy that his best ball is the deep ball. You know, like right. he throws a beautiful, throws a deep really ball, pretty deep ball. You're yeah. right, yep. Those ball, you know, like that pass right there. Like we we got to have that tonight. So. Uh, and yep. also, I like to see Caden out of the pocket a little more than he's been. Use his legs, uh, yeah, yep. get downfield. Uh, well, they're moving him right here. Like he maybe. is he's uh, brought down. Yeah. Nice play there by the Foxes. That's, uh, I believe, it was number 12, Jose Villafranco on the tackle for the Foxes. So loss of one will bring in the punt team. But I agree with you, Tony. You, you move Caden around a little bit, so you give him that option of, you know, go through your well, progression, so look at your fast. receivers, and then yeah. if it's not there and you have a lane, take it. Right. So and if you can run everybody off and, you, you know, you got maybe a four-man rush and you can slip create past, a little spray, you know, yeah, if he gets an open space. field, it's yep. 20 yards usually. Mendoza in to punt for the Farmers. Good snap. Gets it away to the right side, and that's not his best punt. No. Had a little bit of pressure there, but – um. Yeah, not his best effort this year. Maybe and 20 yards. And he's done a good job back there whenever they did make the change and, and brought him in. But, um, yeah, just not able to get into the kick there. So the Foxes are going to have great field position for their first possession here of the game, starting at the Farmers with a 48-yard line. Again, number 10, Alfonso Gonzalez, junior quarterback. We'll be saying his name a lot tonight. He's going to be joined in the backfield. That's going to be number 13, Jace Jenkins, one of the leading rushers for the Foxes. Jenkins and Smith both have over uh, 60 carries, so they're both going to carry the ball quite a bit tonight. Gonzalez takes the snap, hands to Jenkins right up the middle, and he's got a hole. He's brought down by Levi Smith, but not before he's able to gain about eight on the first down play. It's going to bring up second and two from the 40 as the Foxes get to the line quickly, look to the sideline for their play call, and they're already kind of pushing the pace. Jenkins in the backfield again with Gonzalez. Two receivers to both sides. Snap goes back. Gonzalez looks to the left. Throws that one a little too far and tally. out. Yep, tally on the coverage there for the Farmers. Pass intended number 18, Ty Crunt. It's going to bring up third and two. And that is the one thing when you run this high pace, this real fast pace offense is you follow it up with something like that, now you're third and two. Yeah, that's exactly. Yeah. You, you go, yep. of course, they're probably in four down territory. Sure. But, uh, you know, years past, we've done a little quick offense, and it's like 30 Gonzal- seconds off the clock, and we're punting. Gonzalez, but that's a good stop there. Yeah, he keeps Levi it up the again. middle. Levi in there. Got there Stopping early. Short. Yeah. Got a little help from Rafe and Capitillo, but it's going to be fourth and one as they ran Gonzalez just on a quarterback keeper right up the middle. Now, you see here the Foxes are bringing in some of their bigger guys. 
So you're, like you say, obviously four down territory. Yeah. And this is going to be their version of the tush push that Philadelphia runs is going to be my guess. And that's exactly what they're doing. Gonzalez is going to be under center with someone behind him. Farmer's showing a little pressure. Oh, mm-hmm. well, that, oh he might have just spun around it. Levi went for the ball, and I think he had it anyway, but he spun off of that tackle by Levi and got the extra half yard to get it. But good effort there by the Farmers because that was – it they looked like they had held him up there at the beginning of that play. Yeah. that You know, Philly's shown that's just a tough play to stop. It, you run it right, it's impossible. One yard or less, and you, you're going to have to get lucky to stop it. So, First and ten here for the Foxes. Farmers are showing pressure as they bring it up the middle. Gonzalez throws behind the receiver, and that's going to be incomplete. There, well, that really was close to holding as Tayshawn Davis and Latimer both pressuring the uh, inside of that Fox line. But he he probably had 10, 10 yards easy there if he wanted to yeah, run it. Of course, you got to open that. receiver downfield, you know, take the shot. But uh, he had a guaranteed 10. Yeah, he did. So that'll bring up second and 10 here for the Foxes who stay in their four receiver set. Technically, it's going to be an empty backfield as they're going to go with a tight end set here. Oh, there's five. I'm sorry, five receivers. One going to the far side, four over on the other side. He's going to roll out that way. Gonzalez looking downfield, finds the receiver, able to find a soft spot in that Farmersville zone. Nice catch catch. there by Crunk. Yeah, as he's caught that falling out of bounds, that'll be enough for the Fox first down. Gonzalez showing a little of that accuracy that's been able to help him throw for 232 yards a game this year. Fox is now getting close to Farmersville red zone territory as this will be snapped at the Farmersville 24 yard line. Gonzalez raises his leg, takes a snap. Quarterback keeper up the right side. Levi Smith grabs him from behind after a gain of about four. Levi's had a great year, man. He's averaging 12 tackles a game. He's had a couple of games where he had 16, 17 tackles. He's also he, leading. He's having the, fun doing it. And he's lead, yeah, he leads the team in tackles for losses. Yeah, he is the defensive leader on that uh, on that squad, no doubt. One back in the backfield with Gonzalez takes a snap, fakes it to Jenkins, keeps it himself. Ooh, looky there. And Tayshon Davis got a comes flying in there. there. That's another tackle for loss for Tayshon. That's going to make it third and seven, but. Yeah, we. He I got was talking. One hand on him. I was talking about <laughs> him with some other uh, fans wow. before the game, and when he when he does that, you can't stop him. No, like when he finds that seam, you just can't stop and him. And if you'll watch, they're going to be probably trying to stay to that right side. Yep. When stay he's away in from there. him. Yep. Gonzalez takes the snap, fakes to Jenkins. He's got oh, oh a little more pressure there from KO. Kevin Oliver, able to get past that. He's going to pull it down and run. And he is going to be into the end zone. Yeah. yeah, Kevin Oliver there, and just he made that did that cardinal sin of leaving your feet as a defender. Yeah, and when you do that, you're you're almost helpless in midair. And uh, Gonzalez just able to outrun the Farmersville contain and into the end zone for the Foxes. Yeah, kind of like on a on a kickoff or punt return. You know that that first guy down. You know they miss when they're free like that, and Ko came free. And yep. Uh, just slid right by him. So Ivy in for the extra point attempt for the Foxes. Snap is up. Looks good. And it is. So with 6.55 to play in the first quarter, Catamill strikes first. Jump out to a 7 nothing lead. And again, going back to that fourth down conversion, yeah, we held him on a couple of plays. I mean that you know that one big play there um, was kind of the, I mean that was fifty percent of their possession. Yeah, they was had on that, that one play and nice so, pitch and catch on the far side yeah. and 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 of course that was a long run there. But you know coverage has been good, uh, pass rush has been good. Sure, it's just going to be contained because right there you know Gonzalez obviously gets outside of it and he's got a lane to the end zone and then you'd mentioned earlier in the possession whenever he threw it but he had all that space right. out there and that's something blasting game and his coaching staff they'll, they'll they saw that just as quickly as we did and they'll they'll find a way to uh to correct that for sure yes they will so Ivy will be teeing it up again for the Foxes Arden Cox back deep 
having a hard time seeing a number or two out there. It looks well, like we're, that's... We're a long ways away from them. Yeah. <laughs> looks like... <laughs> this Ford, press box is... <laughs> looks like Gordon Swartz out there, and I'm assuming that's Cuddy Fisher on the other side because he's been back there all, all year. But, yeah, we are a, a little further away than we're used to being. Ivy had, kicks it deep. That's going to be... That's a heck of a kick. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. going to be over Arden Cox and into the end zone, so that will be a touchback. Farmersville will be taken over from their own 25-yard line as that was Cuddy Fisher back there with Arden Cox to take the kick. So the Farmers Hill offense now had a chance to uh, get out there and run some plays, had a little success on the ground, completed some passes, but Cattle Mills did a good job of tackling in space and limiting the yardage after catch. So let's see what this Farmers Hill offense, uh, see what kind of momentum they can gain right here and get them some rhythm. Well, it's certainly early, but, you know, I don't think, you can't give up on the run, you know, like I said, we're not at that point. You know, you gotta establish that run game. Keeper uh, there by Norman, just as you mentioned that, yeah. yeah. Keeps yards. it for four Let's yeah, go. four years, four yards every time. But no, you're right. Yeah, you've just gotta stick with what's worked all year long, and it's definitely been the, the running game has been our strength on offense for sure. You've got a really experienced and, and talented offensive line down there, and you lean on those guys as much as you can. For sure. And you know, that's our advantage. Gerardo, you know, has really jumped on the scene this year from the you know running back position and just incredible downhill runner. Fake to tally. Norman keeps it again around Five the outside. More, and he's going to get a first down. Yeah. Yep. Nice gain there on second down. A gain of six. It goes right at the uh, yard to gain. Is that will move the sticks over for a new set of downs for the Farmers. So Farmers are staying in their three receiver set. Reyes stays in the backfield behind Norman. Cato showing a four-man front. Farmers is going to run at it, and there they do go. it with Reyes. Zigzags his way up to the middle, and they take him down right at the 49-yard line. So gain of 14 yards on first down for the Farmers. As again, we kind of talked about controlling that, that that ground game, controlling the clock, keeping that that Cato offense so off those, the field. Those big breaks from Gerardo have been there all year, but they've kind of been missing the past couple of weeks. Sure. And, uh, I mean, that's a nice to see it right there. Yep. So, uh, hopefully that's a sign of, you know, a yeah. few more of those before the night's over. Another handoff to Reyes up the middle. Same spot. So, Cato has got six guys in the box. And what we've seen the last couple of games, Tony, is guys are stacking that box with eight guys, sometimes yeah. even nine, and just playing individual, you know, just solo straight-up coverage on those receivers. Right. And um, that's exactly what Josh is trying to get. Yeah, them to do. <laughs> and they've got six out here, and Farmers was taking advantage, averaging about five yards a carry tonight. So, right. another gain of five on first down there. Yeah, you get this. You know, you start getting this one hundred and one with Arden, which they're giving us right now. Uh oh, uh -oh. Ball on the ground. Nice job there by the Farmers of falling on that. As Reyes had the first down, and I believe that was Phelps. Yep, Caden Callen. Phelps to Callen. Got Callen, it. sorry, Callen. Great job of yeah. Heads up play right there. They're going to mark that short. Yeah, it did. It bounced back just okay. a little bit. Okay. So it'll be third and less than a yard. Ooh, no, they're going to move it. They will take it. Well, it's going to. They've already moved it. <laughs> so air, you can't. The air horn confirms. You can't. Yeah. He went down there after they moved <laughs> it. Battle to, of air horns like going was, on. Yeah, it's funny. So it will be first down here for the farmers. So they'll be snapping this one from the Caddo 41 yard line. You do see some soft coverage out here on Arden Cox. Yeah. They're not real close to him, and, and they're they're shading over the safety. Here, so it's almost like you have double coverage, and that is takes one of those guys out of the box Correct. there. Now, good play there by the Foxes. Again, number 34, second time we've called his name tonight, Barabbas on the tackle. But that is a reason that this running game has been so uh, successful and effective is because you are having to shade over here to Arden Cox. Right. Second and 10 upcoming here with under four minutes to play in the first quarter. So they fake it to Reyes, and he looks at Cox. He goes deep that way, throws it into double coverage. No I flag. He had a hand on the back of his yeah, collar. Yeah, he did. <laughs> and, again, that's exactly what we just talked about. As you saw that safety kind of shade yeah, this that, way. Uh, and and that ball hung up, there. too. Yeah. yeah, That needed to be, you know, if he get it on that sideline a little more to get him to the outside. Yeah. But he kind of broke, broke that inside, so. So the Farmers are going to go with four receivers here. you got to think they're in four-down territory if you pick up any positive yardage right now. 
Reyes in the backfield with Norman. Two receivers to both sides. Actually, Caden Johnson's going to go to the other side. Going to fake to Reyes, keeps it around the right side. Norman's going to be able to pick up about six yards, gets down to the 35-yard line. So you're definitely in four-down territory now as you only need about three and a half yards to get the first down. Nice play call there by Coach Howard as I think everyone here was expecting the ball to be in the air. Spread him out a little bit, and then like you had mentioned earlier with Caden, is let him use his legs. So fourth and we'll call it three and a half. Too far for a tush push. Yeah, exactly. Farmers look to the sidelines, get their call and protection. Caden talks to the offensive line, verifies it. A lot more guys in the box. They go to the option look here. Torres sprints to the sideline, and he is going to be really close. Let's see where they mark that, Tony. It looks like it might be about a half a yard short, though. Well, it's got to be this line, Judge, for the spot. Uh, it's harder to tell. Of course, the one across is lining up, which looks short. Looks like a worse spot from the line judge on this closer side. Yeah. They came up about a half a yard short there as they went for the the option look, which they, we've seen them run that a, a time or two, and it wasn't for lack of effort by Reyes, but just not yeah, able to Reyes get to Reyes was it. running extremely hard yeah and coach Quinlan is not happy with the spot no he's not up here you know it's hard to tell but yeah we're at a little bit of an angle in like you say pretty far away so dang it that is a that's a tough half yard to miss by so the foxes will take over on the turnover on downs from their own 33 yard line gonzalez with four receivers one back in the backfield with him it's going to bring a man over Takes the snap. Bubble screen out to the left side. Receiver gets past Cuddy Fisher, who was there quickly, just not able. No, I'm sorry, that was Kevin Oliver, just not able to bring him down. And uh, turns it into a gain of just a couple, though, as it looks like he might have stepped out of bounds at about the 35-yard line, though. So not as bad as it looked initially. Gain of about two. Again, four receivers for Gonzalez. Takes the snap, looks to the left again, goes that way again, connects again. Same receiver. That's McDaniel. He's one of the leading receivers coming into the game. Yeah, you can tell it in their first day to play catch. Yeah. That's a, that's a timing pass. It's, yep. You know, the ball's in there before he hits his break. So they have, Yeah, they've thrown that a few times. So now he's getting up. He's going to give him a bump on the line, see if they can't disrupt that. Yeah, Farmers, it looks like they've gone to a man coverage here. It's exactly what they've done. They're going to go that way again. Yep. And so when you do that, Dante Pearson on the covers there for the Farmers did a really good job of running with uh, with with McDaniel. But so when you do that, you close the window down. Right. And, and yeah, you take it is a little bit riskier if they're able to connect, you know, on that and, and you miss a tackle. But it does make that window a lot smaller. And as you saw right there, Gonzalez just not able to connect. So now it's going to be second and long. As Farmers, it looks like they're going to kind of stay in this man defense. And maybe bring a little pressure from Levi Smith. Yeah, he's coming right up the middle. Nice, nice job there oh, by tip, tip. Oh, goes through the hands of Huggins. Levi Smith really heads up play there though, because he had a straight run to the quarterback and he stopped yep. because he felt the screen behind yep. him. He's he reading Gonzalez's eyes and did a really good job there of, of messing that play up by not just going full speed. Yeah, watching. Right. yeah. yep. And who, I can't tell who that was. That was Latimer. Yep. Yeah. And then Huggins, oh, man, that's one that he's going to. Huggins good for about a pick a game. Yes, that's one he's going to really hate that he's not able to corral. So five receivers for Gonzalez, takes the three-step drop. He's got some pressure, yeah, he's but he's got, got a lot of room, too. Oh, he makes the Farmersville defenders miss and goes out at the 35-yard line. Two missed tackles there, and that's a big gain on third and ten for the Foxes. Yeah. And that's three times now that we just haven't been able to contain Gonzalez. And you and I talked about it before the game about keeping him in the pocket and putting pressure on him without letting him get outside and use his legs. And unfortunately, he's he's been able to do that tonight a couple of times. Yeah, he, he's been doing it all year. Yep. Uh, so he slides to a, uh, a halt there at the 30-yard line, but another five-yard gain on first down. And again, we talked about this, but he's he's been the offense tonight yeah. for them. So I'm bring up second and five for the Foxes. 
One back in the backfield with Gonzalez. Hands to him, spins out of the first tackle, but then he is met by about three or four farmers, led by Tayshawn Davis. There's Latimer in there again. Levi Smith just making sure that he didn't get back up. So loss there on second down is going to make it third and seven. And again, you think this is going to be one of those where they're going to, you know, give Gonzalez that option of running or passing. They're definitely, you know, they're going to put the ball in his hands anytime they need yep. a first down and give him the choice whether to throw for it, run for it, or... Be nice to see one of those Farmersville defenders be able to connect on one of those sacks. We've been close yeah. a couple of times, just not able to bring him down. Bringing a little pressure. We are bringing some backside blitz. We just talked about that. He runs around it again, connects with the receiver. Man, that's McDaniel. That's, th that's the second, third, and long they've been able to connect on. And again, Farmersville, we had a really good chance there of getting the sack, but when we when you leave your feet like that, you it's so much easier for him to be able to go around you. And, and on the pump fake, he was able to get farmers in the air and goes right around them. So he first and ten for the Foxes, just outside of the Farmersville 15-yard line. Gonzalez fakes it up the middle, keeps it around the left side, yeah. and that's going to be an easy touchdown for him. Well, we have the scout report. Yep. <laughs> yep. And you can tell he's, just, he's super smart and uh, makes good decisions, and, yep. and he's fast. He's just so. athletic. Yeah, he's he's fast. He's a little bit slippery. Yep. You know, he makes a, he's good at just making one cut and not losing any speed. And so it looks like we're getting the pressure up the middle, and that, you know, certainly allows him to that outside. You yep. know, we're just going to have to somehow contain, contain. him and force him yep. back up the middle. Uh, we're – more than one guy and get a hand on him. Obvious extra point is good. So the Foxes jump out to a two possession score here, or two possession lead after the score against the Farmers up 14 to nothing. Powered by two runs by Gonzalez with 39 seconds left to play here in this first quarter. So, yeah, I mean, gosh, the Farmers offense has been literally a half a yard here, half a yard there. Um, defense the same way on the fourth and half yeah. a yard there to in the first possession for the Foxes. And um, the difference in the game is Caddo's been able to take advantage of those tiny right. misses. And, well, that, and we that have was it about yet, so. a third and six or seven right yep. there. Yep. Um, yeah, we've had them third and more than five quite a few times tonight. Right. And uh, I've held them once and forced them into that fourth down. But, yeah, they, just that contain has been – and, again, with someone like – Gonzalez, it's it's a whole lot easier for me and you to say that we just need to contain him. It's yeah. a whole lot harder to go yeah. do it, you know. So, so Swartz, Cuddy Fisher, and Arden Cox back deep here for the Farmers. Like to see one of those guys get a get a chance here. This is going to go to Cuddy. He's taking it about the 16 yard line. Going to be a little reverse to Arden Cox, who gets to the Cattle Mill sideline. Turns it up. Nice gain there. Gets him up past the 35-yard line. Although they're going to say he stepped out at maybe the 32. Oh, and there's a flag on the play, though. I was wondering why he wasn't marking it. Well, the reason he wasn't marking it is because there's a flag on the play, and that looks like it's going to go against Farmersville. And it will. So it's going to be a holding from that 25-yard line. So it'll be a 10-yard mark off and Farmersville will get about half of the full position they should have had as they're going to start at the 15 yard line. So Farmersville takes over for the third time in this first quarter looking for their first points of the game. Stay in their three receiver set with Reyes behind Norman. Little move there by Tally. I think he might have thought he was going to go in motion, and then just that little stutter step. It's going to cost the Farmers another five yards. So it'll make it first and 15. Norman looks to the sideline. 
keep the same play. Tally does go in motion, fakes it to him, gives it to Reyes up the middle. Not a whole lot of room as he's able to fall forward for about a three-yard gain. Starting to see a few more guys in that box for the uh, boxes on defense. Ten seconds to play here in this first uh, quarter. Look, Farmers, it looks like they may, they are going to go ahead and let it run down. Give, them, give themselves a chance to kind of regroup and talk about this next play here on offense. So after one full quarter over here at, in Greenville, you're fighting Farmers. They're down 14 to nothing in this bi-district game with the Caddo Mills Foxes. But again, other than those long, Gonzalez has had some good plays for sure. But we've been real close on offense, half a yard again for that first down. Same thing on defense. Um, yeah. So you if know. you're just tuning in and you see the score, you think, man, th you know this this isn't very close. But they're right there. They just yeah. need a couple of plays to go their way. So we had one punt, then then the turnover on downs and fourth and short on on yep. you know, on the other side of the field. And they barely get it. Yep. And, and a de in debatable spot that may or may not. Quillen doesn't normally fuss unless he has sure. something to fuss about. Sure. He felt like we had the first down there. Yeah, and so those things, I mean, generally they kind of even out over a game. Um, we'll see if we can. Uh, see get, if, they, if they owe us one. Get, get some of that, <laughs> get some of that uh, football luck here in this uh, second quarter. So Farmer's offense taking the field. Break their huddle. Getting ready to run a second and 12 play from inside of their own 20-yard line. If they stay with their three-receiver set with Reyes in the backfield. Behind Norman in the pistol formation. Getting shading a little bit towards Arden Cox with the safety. They look that way. Oh, oh I dropped it. Thought about well, running before he had it, but... Uh, that would have been a nice game there. Yeah, he had a gain of five on the catch, and yeah. he had a little room to, to go there. So, yeah, but and you got to keep throwing to him. No, I agree. I mean, he's he's one of your best weapons on offense for sure. He's he's had a few drops this year, but you know, most of the time it's just because he's thinking about what he wants to do with it. You know, and and you can turn your head too quick when you're thinking about which way you want to go. Norman looks back to the right, throws deep down the middle. Looking for Caden Johnson who had a step, but just overthrows him by a little bit. And so that will be a three and out for the Farmers as they will punt for the second time tonight. Mendoza in to punt for the Farmers. A hard time seeing that return man's number from up here. I think it's seven. Oop, almost oh, blocked yeah, there. Like yeah, 17. almost blocked. Better punt there for Mendoza. But, yeah, he got lucky to get that one away. The the That's the second time tonight. Yeah, they almost got to it the yeah. first punt. So they've definitely seen something, the farmer pump, uh, pump protection that they, that they are uh, trying to take advantage of. So good field position here for the Foxes as they're going to take over from the Farmersville 43-yard line. Second time tonight, they've been able to start a drive inside of Farmersville territory. Jenkins is going to be in the backfield with Gonzalez. They stay in their customary four receiver set. Three to the far side, one here to the near side. Farmers with three down linemen. Gonzalez goes out to his left, completes the pass. Taken down by Kevin Oliver, but there is a flag there that is usually going to be a horse collar or a face mask, one or the other. Yeah, any time you catch them up high like that, they're going to want to throw the flag. Yep. I'm not saying he did horse collar or did sure. face mask, but any time you got a clothesline yep. looking tackle, when you spin you're somebody, not surprised when yeah. you do see the flag. You spin somebody out of bounds, uh, like say up high like that, yeah, it's going to be. Now yeah, it's a face mask is what they're calling, so... 15 yards added to the end of that pass play, and man, in one play, the kind of most foxes are deep into Farmersville territory. 
Jenkins stays in the backfield with Gonzalez. Both Referee. teams look like they, they traveled well. There's plenty of fans here. Yeah. It's a huge stadium, and we're dotting the seats here. Hands to Jenkins around the left side. No gain. Yep, Kevin Oliver, Latimer in there on that tackle. Little help from Rafe as well. Be a loss of one, make it second and 11. And again, not taking away from those Foxes running backs, but the only one that's done anything on the ground so far tonight has been Gonzalez, and it's really been on three of the same types of plays where that contain breaks down, containment breaks down. We got a three-man front here. Yep. Gonzalez looking to the left, going into the end zone, and he's got a guy open, and that is a touchdown. Touchdown there for the Foxes, their third one of this first half. Ten minutes and 56 seconds to play in the second quarter. Yeah, and you just said it. Three down linemen, which means you had eight guys in coverage. Plenty, plenty of coverage, and we, we were beat bad. I mean, that he was significantly past our defenders, so that, that can't happen. Yep. You're only rushing three for that not to happen, so. So Ivy in for the extra point attempt. Oh, they're going to blow that one dead. False start. So they'll back them up five yards and reattempt the extra point. I hope they don't think we're even now after that. <laughs> yeah. We, we still got some credit. Oh, we got, I got a, a little text here from Jaron McT. Jaren, oh, Jaron, I'm you missing. You wouldn't believe how nice this press box is. Oh, my gosh, it's so <laughs> nice. Missing my, uh, my co-broadcaster. <laughs> Kick is up, and it is good. So, Ivy connects on the PAT for the third time tonight. Give the Foxes a 21-0 lead. So, yeah, not the start we wanted as a, uh, as a Farmer fan, for sure. Big plays have kind of... Uh, Powered this offense for Kettle Mills. A couple of runs by Gonzalez and then yeah. a, a pass there. All, all three scores have been on, yep. you know, 30, 30 yep. 40 yard plays. Yep. Um, I don't know. We're just yep. going to have to get it going. And yep. We're going to, you know, you and I talked a lot about offense tonight and how important it was going to be for him, not to just to run the ball, but we need points right. too. We've got to give this defense a chance to catch their breath and to give Coach Blassengame and his crew a chance to decide what they think would be the next best strategy to use. Right. So let's see if that offense can uh, can kind of kick into gear, which we've seen them do a bunch of times this year. Right. Where they, they do kind of find that gear that they need to get into. And um, right now would be a great time. So Avi has it teed up. Kicks it deep. Aims it to the left this time. Cuddy Fisher again takes it at the five. Looking for a little room. Gets up past the 20. Right down at the 29-yard line. So nice return there by Cuddy. Will give the Farmer offense a chance to start from about their own 28-yard line. So, yeah, I mean, it's tough now. You want to lean on that run, but you're down by 21, so you've got to be able to, you know, get some plays and chunks here. And uh, see so what Coach, Coach Howard and his crew decided to do coming out of, uh, out of the timeout after the touchdown. Give to Reyes around the left side. Not a lot of room. Stop for no gain there. That was number 20 on the tackle for the uh, Foxes. That was Bethea. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be nice for them to get a little rhythm of offense so they don't get frustrated. Uh, you know, if you ever move this ball down the field, uh, get a score, you're like, okay, we, we got this, you know. And Yep. 
Hand to Cuddy Fisher was going in motion. Cuddy cuts up, picks up about three. So gain of three there will make it third and seven. So again, you get a little bit behind the chains here, and I think most everyone's kind of expecting you to put the ball in the air and haven't had a lot of success doing that tonight. So see what the farmer offense they would have put together here on this third and seven. Three receiver set. Reyes stays right behind Norman. Yep. All start there on the farmers as your two tackles both stood up before the ball was snapped. So third and seven just turned into a much more difficult third and 12. Say so mark that off. Farmers stay with the same personnel there. Norman takes a snap, looks to the right side. Tunnel screen here to Arden Cox. Picks up about five, but well short of the line to gain. The, uh, the pulling guard there, Tayshawn. No, you probably didn't see that, but his block was uh, not going to be making his, – his guy was not going to be making the tackle. <laughs> I didn't see it. Dude, he was flat. <laughs> so Mendoza end again to punt for the third time tonight in this first half. See if they can keep him – give him a little nope. more time. Oh, he man, another guy through. right through there again. Taken by number 17 of the Foxes. As he squirts past – Midfield up to about the 46-yard line, so good field position again for the Foxes to start this possession here with 8.41 to play in the first half. Was that three possessions? That they've started inside of Farmersville territory, yep. And that's just – That's result. four down territory for them. I mean – Yeah, it, it's – the offense just not being able to get that ball moving. You right. know, we just – we haven't been able to – to gain any momentum at all on that side of the ball. And so you've stayed on one half of the field. Yeah, the kickoff return with the hold, you know, should have been about the 40 to start yep. there and wound up with a false start or yep. whatever on top of that. So we're at the 10. So yep. Hands to Jenkins up the middle. Gain of about four on first down. Brought down by Levi Smith. Little help from Latimer as well. Take Quinlan in there. As the Foxes look to the sideline, get their play quickly. H back in there with the running back. Say so fake it to Jenkins. He's looking to the left side. Nice defense there by Dante Pearson. Did a good job of reading the receiver's eyes when he put his hands up to. Uh, Try to catch the ball. Dante put his hands up as well, able to swath that one away. Makes it third and seven. And Dante playing out there at corners, knew he's been playing safety yeah. all year. He's done a great job tonight out there at a new position. Our secondary's done really well this year. You know, a bunch, bunch of interceptions. Gonzalez wanted to go to the left. Oh, man. So guys make nice throw and catch. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> Nice throw and catch there to McDaniel. And good job, that Farmersville defensive line. They saw him trying to go across the middle. They took away his first option, and then he goes to his second or third option there, catches McDaniel on the dig, and uh, throws a really nice ball, able to connect first down for the Foxes. As Gonzalez looks to the list this time, <sighs> gets out of the – Another sack, possible hold. sack by Farmers. Yeah, and there's a hold there. Hopefully that is in that area of holding. We're due. Oh, goodness. Little. There's another flag. Yeah, so a little dead foul. ball. So it could be two flags because that, that's going to be after the play was over. Yeah, one was dead ball. And now was it against the Farmers or the Foxes? Because he threw it really, really late when it might have been one of those reactionary things. Yeah. Where they don't get the first one, they get the second one. So Our guy was flying the other way. So hopefully yeah, hopefully we, he we saw that. You know? Yeah, I agree. 
be nice to go from first and 10 to first and 35. 35. <laughs> I still didn't see it right there. So there's a hold there. We see that. And then let's see what the dead ball foul is. So dead ball, personal foul against yeah. the Foxes as well. So it will be a 25-yard mark off here. Those, those should add together, right? Yes. Because it was after the well, play. Because one was dead ball, correct. Yeah. yeah, you don't pick one over the other. So, yeah, they, they should be walking this one back a little ways. Gosh, my side would be hurting if I had to walk that far. <laughs> I know. I had, when I come all the way up these stairs, I tell everybody, don't, don't talk to me for five minutes. That elevator was a little shady, but it was worth it. Right. <laughs> yeah. So there's the hold call, the official hold call. And then you'll see the dead ball signal, personal foul. That was going to be what our awesome replay team showed us yeah. with the push after the play was over. Can't hear exactly what he said, um, but I'm pretty sure what he said was, let me get my calculator out and add <laughs> up all of these yards that we got to mark backwards. Yeah. And then he's going to go another 15 from there. So, All right, now let's get a turnover. Yeah, no kidding. Let's, uh, let's take advantage of this. this first, I think that's the first – penalty against them tonight just so happened to get two of them stacked on top of each other so so they will be snapping this ball in their own territory <laughs> so five receivers for gonzalez so the ref tells them to start the game clock and the play clock three down linemen for the farmers so they can put a little pressure on with those three and they do as latimer gets through the middle able to complete the pass out here to the receiver. Nice gain there on first down, though, man. Probably 13. Yeah, gain of almost yeah, 13 or 14 yards as they get back the first penalty. Nice throw there to Chase, second leading receiver for the Foxes coming into tonight. And Gonzalez just showed you there, not just arm strength, but he throws a really good ball, too. Yeah, he, he's very accurate. He can get something on it. So. Yep. Having not seen him play, I've uh, been more impressed with his arm than I thought I would be. He's definitely, he knows how to throw it. So, Completes another one across the middle. Another big gain there on second and really long. And after two plays, they've gone from first and 35 to third and 11. Is that a flag down? Can't tell if that's a flag or a yeah, shoe. A they could yeah. call a face mask here. They had yeah, another I think that's head. exactly what. Uh, see, it was under the helmet. Like, that's yeah. not a face mask. That was the call, though. Man, it's just been that kind of night for Farmers, though, when you go from a first and 35 to a first down and two plays for the Foxes. That's just, yeah, it's been that kind of night. So that'll be a first down for the Foxes as they'll mark this ball just outside of the Farmers, 10-yard line with six and a half minutes to play in this first half. And, yeah, Tony, it's just been that kind of night, unfortunately. Sometimes the field feels like it's just kind of tilted one way. Yeah. Well, so far it definitely has. And Gonzalez rolling out to his left, looking into the end zone, throws that way, and he's got a guy wide open. Second touchdown pass of this first half for Gonzalez. Puts the Foxes up 27 to nothing. I'll be in to attempt the extra point. Good snap, good kick, and it is. So with six minutes and 20 seconds to play here in the second quarter, Foxes out to a 28 nothing lead. And you can look at the sideline and in the stands, Tony, and it's just uh, yeah, it's dead here on this Farmersville sideline. And man, I dare to say this might be the worst first half we've played all year. Well, I'm pretty sure it is. Like I say, it would have had to been uh, this one or that last game, and you know, it was almost 10 ten oh right at half. Right, exactly. Yeah. So we'll see what the farmers can do anything here with six twenty as they get the ball back 
after the kickoff. But yeah, it's uh, you've on offense. You've got to uh, to do something right here. This hole gets any deeper, it can it can almost be insurmountable. Well, you know they'll, they'll start. Yeah, it'd be insurmountable. They'll start taking players out to protect them and. Sure. Yep, and Cato unfortunately is going to get the ball to start the second half. So. Hopefully we'll we'll start getting some breaks go our way. Yep. Like it, we're, we're it has been good. just a one sided. Yeah, I completely to agree. To nothing. Just not used to seeing this at all. Harden's going to take it out. Yeah, he is. He doesn't get to return many. He's got a hole. Oh, just Shoes man. Down. Yeah, that one tackle right there. If he gets past him, he's got another ten or fifteen yards before the next defender. And good luck catching that guy when he gets ahead <laughs> of steam up. He is fast in pads. Yep. Farmers take over from their own 24. Yeah, and I agree with you. This just isn't farmer football that we've seen this year. And um, it's been it's been tough to watch just because we know what they can do. We've seen what they've done all year long. And, and unfortunately, just a, a, bad, so, a bad time to have a, a bad half. For sure. And it's kind of the same thing as, as last week, you know. Offense has to be on the field more. Like, you just got to get some first downs. Um, little miscommunication there as Arden Cox runs the go and Norman thought he was going to break that off at the sticks. So second and 10, but no, you're right. The, he's going to gonna need this offense to answer the bell a couple of times for sure. Yeah. And, you know, defense, I don't think they've punted yet. Of course, they, when you start the ball on their on yeah. side of the field, they're probably not going to punt, right. but – right. uh, We've not. They've scored every possession, if, if I'm not mistaken. Is yep, that correct? that's correct. Thanks to Reyes. Throws it just outside of the reach of Caden Johnson. So that's going to be third and ten after two incompletions to start the drive here for the Farmers. Six minutes and seven seconds to play here in the first half. Your farmers looking for a really important first down. Court Norman rolling out to his left. Not able to connect with Cuddy Fisher there. So three straight incompletions. Three straight incompletions for the farmers there. We'll bring in the punt team. Well, I was... Uh you get to a point in the game where you start talking about some other stuff, I think. So uh, <laughs> I was very impressed with the, the what they did for cash last week. That was really cool. Yeah. Uh, and just these coaches knowing you know, that's been a couple years and they still know what he meant to them. Yep. Now, I really – I agree. Really cool moment there during senior night getting to they, walk the yeah, field. They were blown with this, away yep, with that. The jerseys. Cash jerseys. And, yep, getting to keep that. Picked up by the Fox returner. He's going to get up right at the 50-yard line. One-yard pass is where they're going to mark him out. Mendoza had a little more time on the punt. He's got a couple of farmers limping off the field yeah. after that after that uh, coverage. William, one of them, Sally. William Sally, yep. I think Florin was the other one. And, of course, the ball is on our side. Yeah, 49-yard line. So Jenkins will be the running back in the backfield with Gonzalez. Two receivers to the far side, one here to this near side. Going to give to Jenkins. Kevin Oliver there immediately for the tackle. Gain of zero yards. I'd like to have that on first down. Farmersville had five guys there on the line of scrimmage. Got to imagine those two outside guys, really their goal is going to be to try to turn Gonzalez back up whenever they can, try to funnel him back towards the middle. Empty backfield. No, one backfield. One person in the backfield. I'm sorry. Man. Another nice throw and catch. 
Gonzalez throws a really nice ball. Yeah. I mean, he, he's very accurate. Throws that one to Webersh, and he was, I mean, it's just hit him right in the chest. I'm not sure what his uh, completion percentage is tonight, but it is. <laughs> it's pretty good. Up there. Yeah, it's pretty good. Gonzalez going to be a quarterback keeper up the middle. Hold, maybe. Shot through there, and there the ball's on the ground. The Farmers shot. looked like they were the first ones on it. Yeah, so they come away with it. It depends on the flag. A yeah, call. that should be a he turnover. Yeah, he did. Let's see what the flag is. Is everybody's leaving the field yeah. like they already know what it is? Yeah, I think there's a reason why he had such a big hole to run through. But let's <laughs> make sure that that's right. As Farmersville's offense and Caddo's defense are already coming on the field. <laughs> I want to see who got that hit. Chop block. Yeah, chop block. So that's obviously going to be declined. And, man, that's a big turnover. Just, if anything, let's get a tiny bit of momentum on our side right now because we haven't had any well, the whole game. I can assure you that quarterback's uh, – he's been running free all night, but he's going to have a head on the swivel the rest of the night because he got popped. Well, we saw him – um, slide a couple of times earlier. Yeah. I could see him sliding a few more yeah. times now. So, so Farmers is going to come out with Reyes behind Norman and the pistol. Three receivers. Arden Cox on the far side by himself. Cuddy Fisher goes in motion. Hands to Reyes. He's tackled in the backfield. Nice play there by Bennett Hale, senior defensive tackle for the Foxes. Loss of one. Yeah, Gerardo's being. Yeah, he might have landed on the ball. Yeah. Because he got, he got tackled from behind, and that's easy. You land on that ball, and, man, you can lose your breath really quick. That'll move Cuddy Fisher back into the backfield as Tally will check in at the slot. Hands to Cuddy. Nice move there by Cuddy. Go, As go, he go, stays go. on his feet, he breaks a couple of tackles and gets down into Fox territory. Nice run there by Cuddy Fisher. Picks up about 22 yards on the carry, and that's the spark that that Farmers of offense needed. I've got a glare in this glass. I thought I saw the ball hit the ground. Probably not. But. Another handoff to Cuddy. Fox is not tricked this time. They tackle him for a loss of one. Three and a half minutes to play here in this first half. Farmers looking for their first points. So they look to the sideline with Fisher staying in at running back. Arden Cox, single coverage up top. They hand it to Cuddy right up the middle. He gets down to about the 40-yard line before he's brought down on number 12, Jose Villafranco, for the second time tonight. Third and seven. You're definitely in four-down territory. Yeah. Pick up three or four here and three or four on the next play. Move those sticks. Let's pick up 40 right here. Let's do that, too. <laughs> Fisher stays in in the backfield. Hands to Fisher. He's got a hole. He's got the first down and then some as he goes to the sideline. Face mask. And eventually pulled out the inside the 20. That's yeah, that's tackles should, we've had. That should be the, the exact same, same call. Yeah. You grab him by the helmet like that. Coach Roberts is telling him. But nice hard run there by he watched, Cuddy he Fisher. Get him under the helmet, which is exactly what yep. we did. Same call. Yep, he is mad. Two nice runs by Cuddy Fisher on this possession. So they give the ball to him again. Not able to bounce off of that one, though. Tackled in the backfield by number 34, Gavin Barabas. It's the second time he's had a tackle for a loss tonight. Luckily, it's only going to be a one-yard loss as they mark him at about the 20, or I'm sorry, the 19-yard line. So not as bad as it looked. So you hurry to the line. We get close to two minutes to play here in this first half. Norman fakes to Cuddy, goes out to oh my gosh. Arden Cox, and he dropped it. He is 
That's two to nine uh, where he's just been. Hey, man. Jammed a finger. Well, that would makes it tough to uh, be a receiver. So they're going to – Trainer Blaine's going to go check on Arden, who's – I have no idea what happened. In there. some pain, for yeah. sure. So the Farmers will continue to rotate some players in here. Yeah, he um, – he went down. It looked like he was holding his hand at first, but now they've he's on the ground. They did pull him up by one arm. He's holding that left one in, though. So Might have just got hit in a sensitive area. We'll see. <laughs> it's about a half mile over there from where we're sitting. <laughs> right. Could have been anything. I, I, I was wondering that. But. Could have been a trip wire. You can't see anything from up here. <laughs> It is a wire. You, you got that from your dad. I guess that's when we should <laughs> say happy Veterans Day to that's all those veterans. Very true. Good call there, yeah. We we're lucky. To, in Farmersville, we've got a lot of those guys that serve valiantly for us and appreciate them very much. Hayden Norman drops the snap, picks it up, though, able to gain a couple, maybe one, so it will make it fourth and ten as – Farmersville is going to send in the field goal team here. So it'll be a 35-yard field goal attempt for Jackson Madrid, who's only win, missed one extra point all year long after going all year last year and missing none. So, And, you know, in the preseason, we kind of had the shakes on yeah. that. Yeah, <laughs> Coach Walker, he cleaned that up, man. But, yeah, you're right. It was It was way different in the preseason than it was last year. So they're going to wait a little bit for the game clock to go down. So Coach, uh, yeah, Coach Quinn lets the clock run down to zero, takes this time out, which is smart because you're, you're probably not going to need them the rest of the half. Right. And this allows your field goal team to go out there and get in because this is all about timing on your snap, knowing when to get down into your stance for uh, Jackson to know whenever he needs to uh, take that first really important lead step. So, yeah, really smart play call there by Quinlan. And, you Leave know, them I, not anymore than Yeah, I was going to say, it, surprise, kind of that yeah. Caddo didn't try to stop it, at, you know, when it was a minute 40 right. to save more time. So, uh, yeah, see if the Farmers can put their first points on the board here. And Jackson been a really good kicker for two years. And uh, it's just a little bit longer than the extra points that he's made a whole bunch of over the last two years. So yeah, that one preseason game, I think we scored five touchdowns and we made maybe one extra yeah, point. Yeah, it, it was and rough. It might have been more than that. It was and then rough. he's been money since yeah. then. So yep, it'll be out of the hold of Caden Johnson. Good snap, good hold, kicks up, looks good, and it yeah. is. What a kick there from 35 yards out by Jackson Madrid as the Farmers are on the board. 28-3 to three as they take advantage of the fumble by Alfonso Gonzalez. And nice job there by Cuddy Fisher of yeah. coming in for Gerardo Reyes, who was injured there. No, I think Cuddy he might have got the air knocked out of him in Cutter had Cuddy had two 20-yard runs on that man position. Man on fire right yeah, there. Yeah, he was. And, uh, yeah, showed a lot of intensity and uh, turned out turned out of a, a three-point gain there for the Farmers. So just getting that zero off the board is uh, definitely does something for the mental side of this game. So, And now it's interesting because you've, we've got this two-kicker, you know, kickoff that we have that we've we've done a lot of different things with. We've, we've Both of them have kicked onside kicks. We've pooched it. We've kicked it deep. We've recovered some. I mean, like. Well, they, I bet they don't kick it deep. Like, they're going to do something. You, it looks like the there's hands, a chance to, yeah. to, for us to get the ball back. And if not, they're going to have to go, you know, 60 yards to get another touchdown. Well, Coach Walker, a little fired up. He was missing a player or two. And we might be up here, but I think I heard him yelling from up <laughs> here. He was. So you'll have Mendoza and Madrid, both kickers here. And uh, you see some of the. Return guys for 
Caddo. Now they're all kind of looking at each other like, okay, wh what do you think is going to happen? <laughs> so they look to the sideline here. It's going to be Mendoza. Kicks it right down the middle, a little pooch kick. Yeah. Taken by McDaniel, looking for some room around the left side. Pushed out of bounds by Kevin Oliver at about the 30-yard line. So that's where the Foxes will take over with less than a minute, 59 seconds to play here in this first half. As they have two timeouts. How about the heartbreaker in Sulphur Springs the other night? Actually, I take that back. They have three timeouts. Yeah, they have all three. Yeah, man, unfortunately, I wasn't there for it. I was able to listen. And, I figured uh, you were... Well, I broadcasting that one. Coach Davis filled in for me. He and my wife Ginger did a great job. I listened in, and um, man, I, when I saw they were up two sets to one, uh, I was you know feeling really good about it. But man, what a what a season those lady farmers had! Really proud of them. Yeah, they did have a really good season. Gonzalez looking that way. A lot of uh, pressure uh, by uh, the oh, farmers. Oh. oh, is that a ball or a hat? That's his, he threw hat. his hat. Okay. Yeah, somebody went out of bounds. Okay. And so he has to signify that with the hat, but. Yeah, Tally not able to bring that down just a little bit too far out of bounds, but good pressure there by the Farmers to force that throw wide by Gonzalez. But, Tony, we were talking about a good program, good team, good program, and that, that Lady Volleyball uh, program is, is a really, really strong program. Right, and and the proof is you, you graduate super superstars and you're still good. Still, that's right. <laughs> still go 36-4. and four. Nice Defense here by the Farmers. I mean, we may call a timeout. Yeah. I doubt it. But. Quinlan's thinking about it, I think. He's going to let it go here. No. Nope. I don't know who called that timeout, but somebody did. I doubt it's Caddo. No, there's a flag down, actually. There's a flag down on the 40-yard line. Let's see what the call is. That's... It, if he calls, I don't know. I understand how you can call something from back over there unless it's a substitution penalty or something like that, because there's nothing that could have happened over there that would have affected a play coming this way, right? To the right side, so it can't be illegal contact or anything like that. So I don't. That's a weird spot for a foul. Personal foul against the farmers is what of they're calling. Of course, it is. So it must have been a dead ball. He didn't signify dead ball. It had to have been a dead ball foul though. But man, that's a killer. When you've got 37 seconds left and you've got them, in, you know, backed up, it was about to be third down, and now it's going to be a first and 10, and you give them 15 yards. Don't really know what happened there. I didn't, I didn't see anything see after the play, but obviously somebody lost the temper or something happened. Yeah, you, you could tell they're starting to get a little yeah. chirpy with each other. Yep. As, as happens in these games, for sure. So, Gonzalez, five receivers. One goes in motion. Looking down the middle. He's going to go deep to chase. There we and go. That's, hang, on, oh, hang on. In the hands of Cuddy Fisher and yeah. not able to bring it in. But great coverage by Cuddy. And Rafe was underneath to help on anything that was thrown short. But, man. Oh, he had it. Either way, it was really good coverage by Cuddy to be yes. there. So the Foxes come come out with five receivers again here, 20 seconds to play in this first half as it looks like they're going to use a timeout here. I'm still – I'm going to have to figure out and go back and watch the – replay of the live stream to see what happened on that personal foul because I just didn't see anything. I didn't see any... Yeah, there wasn't a, hurt, a did, whole lot there. Didn't seem like pushing or anything or anyone in each other's faces. You know, that, you, you, that stuff's usually pretty easy to point out, but not sure. No, on the volleyball, that was... I'm going to take the fall on that because period and almost a half in, I told Trey McKeever, we go start the bus. <laughs> 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 yeah. I just, you know, everything was going our way to that point. Yeah. And, uh, you know, kudos to Lindell because sure. they completely turned around the way they were playing. Well, they're a good team. They're a they really are. good team. And, I mean, not just, yeah, not just what they've done on the court, but they've been another one of those programs that we've ran into a couple of times. And we've handled them for the most part for the last couple of years. But we do see them in playoffs oh, and in tournaments. Good. And they're, Whatever they're in. They're, they're good. They're good. Yep, I agree. 
So the farmers break their defensive huddle. Gonzalez has got a back in the backfield and an H back in. There's only three receivers here. Yeah. Timeout, 20 seconds left. Probably some trickery. Yeah, I'm thinking some sort of little screen or a reverse of some sort. Oh, they release Chase. So it looked like they were going to, well, they're still getting after it again. Yeah, and I don't. I saw the farmer on the ground, but I don't know if that was who that's going to be against. But man, I think I know what the coaches are definitely going to be addressing at halftime. Yeah, like it, I say, no, nobody wants to be down twenty-five and uh, kind of be in this position. But you, you got to keep your emotions in yeah. check. If it is us, you know, I'm not saying it is, but yep, it isn't over yet for one thing. Um, no, I completely agree. We've, uh, we've scored more than 25 and a half a couple of times this year. <laughs> well, let's see. Picking it up right now. Coach, yeah, Coach Quinlan's got some questions as well. There's a flag here on the near side. Yeah. These could be offsetting. It looks like, yeah, well, are they going to leave it? The uh, umpire went to move the ball, but he left it where it was for now. So illegal man downfield against Caddo. And maybe that's the only flag? I'm as confused as these officials are, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Luckily, you and I get to describe to everybody at home what's going on. Yeah. So they're – if that's the only flag, they haven't marked it off yet. Fourteen seconds to play. I mean, there's only a couple of plays left in this half, and these refs are bound to determine to drag this out as long as they can. Band's raring to go. They are. Let's talk about that farmer band as well. Vance. Yeah, that was, they had it to sixth. Yep. Uh, for the state competition, and they four take, went correct. Take the top four. Yeah. Try, right. yeah. But man, if you've if you've driven by early in the summer. You see them out there on that field. You go by there at night. You see them out there on that field. Well, that's another Again, one of your programs. I was about to say, <laughs> I was about to say, Mr. Cross. He is. Uh, he's done a great job with that that band program. Going to hand to Jenkins this time, as they're just going to go ahead and try to head into the to the locker room here. I can assure you, they don't want to have a an AV competition. <laughs> we'll be toting that gold medal home. There's no doubt of that. So. Well, at the end of the first half, over here at TA Cotton Ford Stadium in Greenville, you're fighting farmers down 28 to three, but showing a little little grit there at the end of that second half, uh, end of that second quarter. And uh, Tony, we'll see what they can do after this halftime here. So, you guys stay tuned at home, and we will bring you on the second half kickoff as soon as we can.
Я тебя спросил, ты знаешь или нет вообще. Ну ладно, спасибо за термос. Ну да. Ну ты чё? Пошли.
All right, welcome back, everybody. Getting ready for the second half kickoff over here at the Bad District game between your farmers and the Foxes of Caddo Mills. If you're just now joining us, you look at the scoreboard, 28-3, to 3, and it uh, it felt about that bad, Tony. Like, for the first quarter and a half, anyway, that second half of that second quarter, we do get that the turnover. Right. We go down there, put together some nice plays on offense, and, and make a 35-yard field goal, which is always fun to see here in the high school level. But right. Caddo, it did seem like that field was kind of tilted their way for that first quarter and a half, for sure. So if you go back to that, you know, that drive stalling out, it was Arden had a ball, you know, that he would expect to catch. And then Caden had kind of a bobbled snap. Yep. And so there's two of your downs, you know, first and 10 from the, you know, 20, somewhere in there. And and you don't even get to run a play. Right, yeah. It kind of yeah. just stalls out, you know, and yep. it happens. But yep. uh, that's kind of just been the MO for tonight is not going our way. So. Yep. No, I mean, I would say of the, uh, the, the games we've seen this year, for the farmers, that was that was not their best half by any means, and um, again, started to feel a little bit of that momentum shift, like you'd mentioned. You know, trying to get something to go our way. It it was what five six minutes left in the second quarter before there was even a flag thrown against Caddo Mills. Right, you had the you five know. yard false start on a extra point when yeah. it was twenty seven to nothing. <laughs> right, yeah, uh, and then they they did get a holding and a. And a, and a personal foul. Yeah, and a dead ball penalty. Right. And then we got the turnover. And so it, slowly, you know, you started to kind of fill it even out a little bit. And so talking to uh, some of the coaches at halftime, passing them as they were coming up the stairs. Um, 85 steps, by the way. <laughs> the <stairs. laughs> There's a lot of steps, yeah. Uh, they uh, Obviously, they're just as frustrated, you know, as, as anyone. Um trying to you know figure out the right strategy do we put more guys in coverage do we bring more guys in pressure because if you remember uh, gonzalez a couple of times uh, we had pressure on him and just couldn't make the play you know whether it was he was able to get someone in the air on a pump fake and go around them or just kind of outrunning the edge and and outrunning the contain guy and so you know you drop more guys in coverage thinking okay well we'll contain him that way and then they're able to find those soft spots in the zone so We'll see what that bring it right up the middle with Jenkins. He's tackled from behind by Latimer. And and Farmersville did have good pressure that he just ran to the opposite side of it. As uh looked like he had a couple of backers coming off that strong left side of that Caddo line and they ran to the right side. Five yard gain on first down brings up second five. Hands to Jenkins again. He's met by Tayshawn Davis and goes nowhere. So up twenty five. I mean you gotta expect him to Kind of run, run the ball, control the clock. Try to salt this game away a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, the, you know, I, I see us stacking the box and forcing them to sure to do something. And so you look like you got man coverage out there. And now they're bringing a little pressure here. Farmers there, going to throw it deep, and that is almost picked off there by Rafe. Yeah. Rafe but that is the of. first time tonight we have forced a three and out. Yeah. So. You know that that might be a little little showing of the the playing not to get beat. Sure, uh, you're exactly so right. You you wind up putting seven up pretty quick, and once again they'll they'll have to go back to what they were doing sure. in the first half. But they probably don't want to do that unless but they have to. You so. can, yeah. Well, you know what always makes me nervous, Tony, is when your kick. I mean, when your quarterback is your punter, because <laughs> it just. Well, that was me uh, back in the day, <laughs> but I wasn't a very good quarterback or punter. <laughs> I did win the uh, All Greenville. Uh -oh. oh yeah, see for this, this exact that, that's exactly what you were getting at the fake punt. And they are going to be right at the line. This is going to all depend he's on the spot. Right oh, he's going to put him short. He put him short. He put so, him short. Yeah, I was not that much of a threat, so they that, never had to worry about me. What a big play there for the farmers as. Gonzalez doing the rugby style there yeah. as he runs, and he thought he saw an opening. He picked up four when he needed five, and that's going to be a – I wonder how many times he's done that this year. I mean, you know they've I've, seen the tape, but that wasn't his first time to – Exactly. Like I, I hate seeing those thing. guys back there when they're the punters because it gives you so many options. But for the Farmers, great job by that defense, and that's something that Blasting Game and I have talked about is if you've noticed, they're – their punt return team is the defense mm -hmm. for just for reasons like that, just yeah. in case. So the farmers come out. Nope. 
There we go. They actually, I was looking, I was looking for the third receiver. We might have, and we had our tight end yeah, in, we which had we, him in tight end, yeah, so. we had uh, Levi Smith in at tight end, which we have ran that formation, but not very much this year. And so Farmers will give Cato a different look here. First down run on first down. So they go back to it with Reyes. So that's 12 and 6 right there. And yeah. so I, I guarantee at halftime, of course, they all probably got a butt chewing, but they told that offensive line, hey, yeah. We touted y'all as the best, we're, the we're, leaders of this team. We're leading on y'all right yeah. now. Yep. And uh, it probably didn't take much to, you know, yeah, to get them fire fired up. Them. Yep. Because they are. That's the strength of this team, man. That that O line right there. When they want to, they can get after it. Yes, for sure. Yeah. Farmers having a little a little trouble getting their play called in right here. Looks like Norman found a play he wanted. Hands it to Reyes up the middle, no gain. Yeah. As he's communicating with yeah. the sideline saying, I did I can't hear you, I didn't understand. So that's well, that would have been the same play three times in a row. Yeah. And that wasn't what they were trying to do. Right. There was just some communication issue there. So the farmers will go to their three receiver set here. Reyes stays in the backfield. Gives to him off the right side. There he is go. going to get. First down. Yep. Needed four, picked up five. First down there for the Farmers. As they get inside of the 30-yard line of the Foxes, and they hurry up to the sidelines. They're going to push the pace here in their opening possession of this second half. Ray is again behind Norman. Craddock goes in motion. Fakes to Craddock, keeps it. Norman's going to gain about a yard. Not sure if that's a read or not, but it looked like there might have been a little room out there. I was watching Draylon, so he had me fooled. <laughs> so Levi Smith checks back in at tight end. So they're going to go to a, And they've the, not done that much, if any. No. I guess no. Man, that's the first time I've seen it. They've ran it one other game I remember. Norman's going to give to Arden Cox on the jet sweep coming around the side here. He cuts up at about the 25-yard line, gets down to the 23. So a lot of running for about a three-yard gain there, but I understand putting it in his hands, try to use that speed. So mark it down at the 22. So third and five, two downs to get it. I bet they don't go for a field goal if they need a fourth down here. Bet you're right. Reyes goes around left side, runs hard, spins off of some tacklers. I think going to get a little it. bit of a yeah. push, but I think he might have yeah, had it he by got the first down. Yeah, he had it by himself there. He got down to about the 16 yard line. They're going to move the sticks. A new set of downs here for the farmers who've finally shown some of that rhythm, Tony, that you and I've been talking about trying to get into. So Her Gerardo, I would say him and Levi Smith are the two that jump at me this year. Of like, where did they come from? Sure, like both of those guys have <laughs> right. just been. Yeah. Off the charts. Yep, completely agree. Another hand to Reyes around the left side. Uh oh, falls oh. on the ground. Yeah, and you might have saw what I just saw, but whenever he he uses that free hand to push guys away, and yeah. then he tried to switch the ball yeah. over after he did it, and that is in no man's land. When from going from one hand to the other, and if you get a hand on the ball, it can come out, and that's exactly what happened there. He uh, has some of his senior fellow seniors come up and tell him, keep his head up. Yeah. So turnover there by the farmers. The Foxes will take it inside of their own 10 yard line. Three receivers on the far side and a bunch set. Gonzalez takes it, rolls out to the left, goes that way, looking for one of his receivers, goes across the middle and through the hands of the intended receiver, that was Brimmer, falls incomplete. So bring up second and 10 for the Foxes. Seven minutes, 25 seconds to play here in this third quarter. <coughs> so Farmer's looking to try to flip the field like 
Caddo did there in that first half against us. Like I say, obviously that turnover is not ideal, but if you could get another stop here, uh, something's got to happen quick, though. Yep. I mean, you, you got points you got to put up. Absolutely. So. Brimmer going in motion. Fakes oh, it. Oh, yeah. that's a backwards that pass. A Go backwards get on the ball. Pass. Get on the ball. Get on the ball. They may be blowing it down. That, far that is a official. backwards pass. It was a lateral, so that should have been a live ball. We have got instant re throw the flag, coach. <laughs> that should have been. We're, they can't see it from this angle because they're not really saying anything. But yep. That oh man. So we got pressure on the quarterback. And maybe he blew the whistle and we didn't hear it. But the it far was, side ref was was waving incomplete, okay. which means he was blowing the yeah. whistle. Well, he was not the. It should have been the referee that made that call. So here we go. Pressure up the middle. Gets it. Oh, what a, what a catch by Chase. He's going to be short, short, though. That was an incredible catch. Really good catch. But what? So they're going to bring the punt team in, fourth and two here. But again, when you got Gonzalez punting. You almost don't put anybody back. Yeah. And just protect the 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 fake. Right. You just, just don't let him outside. You almost free release the, you know. Right. The go guys and, and just contain him. My guess is Levi's probably going to spy him this whole go wherever he goes. As he's going to try it again. <sighs> They're going to have a There's hold. a hold, too. We hope it's a hold as Gonzalez is still going. Oh, we may run him out of breath anyway. Yeah. That's got to be a hold. Yep. Oh, oh nice job there by Dante Pearson. Knocks the ball out. Farmers might have got it, but I'm hoping that. Jeez. Yeah, the uh, referee's not even. Yeah, he just yeah, signaled holding against Caddo. Very, uh, very, uh, what's the word, Tony? Fortunate? <laughs> Courageous play for him yes. to pull it down on yeah. fourth and two right well, there you from his the zone. That's a total read 16, for him. Yeah. And when you got an athlete like that, man. He thinks he can make it every time. Um, yeah. get, let him make that decision. Sure. And. You know, he would have made it without the hold. Sure. So, uh, yeah, that, that was a fortunate. And uh, yeah. they're not done yet. They've not punted it yet. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, yeah, you're exactly right. So it's going to be a, be half the distance to the goal from there. And, yeah, he's going to – he probably having a hard time breathing. Yeah, that's why he's got to punt. Those boys, yeah. let him run. Let, <laughs> yes. let him run it in. That's exactly right. So they will move this back. Where are they at now? The 16, so eight yards is what they should go back. Depending on where that hold was. Right. They're still talking about it. Yeah, hopefully they're not saying the hold was past the first down marker. And I think <laughs> oh first down. Why would the... you say that? I think they were arguing over which burger place they were going to go to. <laughs> oh, he's going to talk to the back judge. Not sure why. Yeah, this is, I mean, it seems like what should be a pretty obvious call, but they are spending a lot of time conferring. They got seven officials, is that right? I thought there were six. six. Yeah, there's seven, unless this guy's in training or something. Four, six in the back. Oh, one over here, yeah. Yeah, I mean, goodness. A lot of, a lot of talking over what should be a simple holding penalty from – the Once spot again, of the foul. Yeah, if that if that hold was in front of the first down, they're going to call it from there, which will make it a first down. But he threw it back here. Yeah, I hopefully thought. not. Like no, the, the flag was yeah, back there. Yeah, at the 15-yard so, line. Unless it was another flag somewhere else that we didn't see, but I don't think I see one down anywhere. Yeah, this is a, <laughs> it's a long conference call. <laughs> Well, it's either going to be fourth and about eight, or it's going to be first and ten from really close to where they're at right now. And looks like they're going to yeah they're going to mark it off. Not not sure, man. Yeah. That was a long, long talk to do exactly what you and I thought we were <laughs> going to do. <laughs> Move it back to the eight-yard line. All right. Well, 
The worst part about all that is it let Gonzalez catch his breath. Yeah. Unlike coming up those stairs, you and I are still struggling. <laughs> That's exactly right. We're taking turns talking. <laughs> Let's see if he actually punts one this time. Oh, looky there. Yeah, he kicked that one pretty quick. Let's see if it'll go out of bounds. Cuddy does a nice job oh, of yeah. catching on the big hop. Good job, Cuddy. Oh, really nice job here. Come on, oh, Cuddy. Look at that block. There we go. All right, get down. Yeah, a nice job of zigzagging his way, and he's going to keep on pushing inside of the 25-yard line. Heck of a run there by Cuddy Fisher. Cuddy he's had a, he's he had a good he game ready tonight. To be done. He has had a good game tonight. Yeah, he could have very easily let that ball go out of sure. bounds. And, and no one would have blamed him. No. But yeah. instead he picks it up and picks up about 25 yards. Right. Yeah. So I don't know I don't know what how much time we lost from the fumble to where we're at right now, but that's back where we're at, you know. Yep. So probably three minutes. Right. You're exactly uh, right. Yep. Which is precious time down twenty five. Sure. But we need we need seven points right here. So Draylon Craddock in at running back, hands the ball to him. The ref is going to say he was down, and the uh, Caddo coaches don't like it. But it looked like the ball did come out. We'll be the only folks that have an uh, in-time instant replay on that. But We'll let them snap a play before we show it. That way they don't, <laughs> that's they don't right. really play it. You so know? they can't throw the flag? We don't want the flag. Where is Gerardo? I don't know. I was looking. That's why. That's where I was looking on the sideline when the ball came out. So now Draylon stays in at running back. So you know he he was on the fumble, which you know, they're obviously not going to take him out for fumbling the ball. Nice little move there by Draylon up the middle as he gets the first down, showing a little bit of his uh, elusiveness. First down there for the Farmers as they get to the line of scrimmage quickly. Hand to Draylon again. Little stutter step move from him as he slides down to about the five. So it looks like what they've done here, Tony, is they've kept Levi Smith in, in the tight end position. Yep. You've still got your H back with, with Caden Johnson, and they've just moved Draylon from that slot in at running back. And, and so uh, they're, they're running against a stack box yep. and, and still doing it successfully. So... Might be time to bootleg out of it. Yep, third and three right here. Yeah, you're right, and you might want to you might want to get Caden in motion, or I'm sorry, on the run here and give him some options. But they stay in that same formation, two receivers, and Craddock in the backfield, and they give it to him. Nice stutter step again. Oh, he's going to be short by about half a yard. Let's see where he spots this one. It may be time for a tush push, which I hate that saying, but that's it, what it is. It's, it's the best description. <laughs> quarterback sneak is what it was for 50 years. I now, refuse so. to call it the Philly quarterback <laughs> sneak. I yeah. just can't say anything with Philly. Yeah, it looks like – so they did this um, against Crum where they had – KJ. KJ the in it, Yeah, and the Wildcat quarterback, and they bring in their big package here as we'll have two – Offset backs on the left side. KJ will run hard. Oh, yeah. Dude puts his head down. Runner goes in motion. Fakes it to him. Got it. Oh, yeah. That's a good, nice hard run there by Caden Johnson. Should be a first down. If you go with this, with the uh, near side spot, that looks like it's going to be a first down. It is. The announcer just called the it a first down. It, so, yeah. I'm not seeing the official. Yeah, I was going to say, so the referee is like, well. They, they, yeah, they're staying in that formation. <laughs> like say, they're. Yeah, hey, do it. And You got four chances from here. The jet sweep was open as well. Yeah, and I think you may see that again. Caden Johnson looking somewhere off that left side, ducks his head, spins off of the first tackler. He picks up a yard. And there's a lot of different plays you can run out of this formation from that. Like you talked about that jet sweep. You can bounce it out. They're, they're just going to keep pounding it yep. in. And try to get that push. They continue to work that line of scrimmage. Get in there. Oh, and they get him in. No, oh, they're going to say that forward motion was down. So it's going to be third and goal for the Farmers from the one-yard line. And we are chewing up some some precious, precious clock. Yeah. But it is what it is. 
Same play again. This Atta time boy. he's in. There you go, Farmers. First touchdown of the night. Comes with 231 to play in the third quarter as the Farmers eat into that lead of the Foxes. Now 28 to 9. And so you go back to the first two offensive possessions of the second half. I mean, they've, they've punted both times. Um, so they're going to have to go back to what they were doing the first half. And yep. we'll see. We're getting more pressure on him. Now you're asking them to change gears again after right. they've tried to change some of hey, their we, we strategy. We were going to just try to conservatively sure. milk this out. And now we're going to. Yep. And drew it in for the extra point. Johnson puts it down, kicks up, looks good to me, and it is. Let's, you talk about grit, right? Caden Johnson just showed it four yeah. or five runs in a row right there. He's of tough, literally man. just duck your head and just run. Yeah, he's tough. Yeah, and if something if you run into something, run harder. Yeah. You know? Yeah, he there, there's downhill runners that you don't have to teach them or, and, and encourage it. <laughs> right. He's one of them. Yep. You know, so is Gerardo. Uh, they are downhill runners. So So twenty eight to ten. Feels like a new ball game right here. Two and a half minutes to play in this third quarter and that uh, Caddo sideline lost a lot of energy here in this uh, second half. Let's see if Coach Walker and Coach Quinlan thinking about an onside kick here. Well, the little squib kick uh, almost works. Yeah, yeah. It, it got close. So Looks like they've got a couple of skills kids on this side of the field, but that other side. You know, the uh, way the defense has been, you know, if you could pin them back, sure. You know, kick it deep and uh, try to use that field position game because our, our big play just kind of doesn't seem to be there tonight from the offensive side, right? Uh, but you're right. If we can play, yeah, if we can flip, keep flipping the field like they have been. They do go with the onside. Or just get the onside oh, kick. and it went yeah. over Chase's head and out of bounds before the farmer's able to go down there and recover it. So. Great kick by Madrid, maybe a tad too hard as it does it go out of bounds before we had a chance, but it man. got the hop. <laughs> Chase had no chance on that one, yeah. unless he was, you know, 6-5. So the Foxes. Well, how many times have we seen Peyton Davis just catch that dude on, <laughs> right, the, on yeah. the run? Yeah. Well, so the Foxes will get a five-yard mark off from where it went out of bounds, and they'll take over from their own 41, but. This Farmersville defense keeps playing like they have been. When we get this ball back, Tony, it, it changes the uh, changes the way this game looks for well, sure. Well, it looks, it looks like they've made some changes in the secondary. And so, you know, we, we've, we're we always a threat to intercept the ball. Sure. And uh, See, almost, we can put a little pressure on him yeah. and force one of those. Gonzalez goes around his left side. Once again, he Better he got, contain that time as Dante Pearson comes in and makes the tackle. I promise you he remembers getting smoked when he fumbled that For ball. For sure. There's and no so doubt. He was tiptoeing around that corner. Yep. Yeah, he. you're exactly right. He kind of got low to the ground whenever he saw Dante yeah, squatting you, on him. You get him in the open field, he's going to fly. But in, right. that, in that congested area, yep. he, he, he wasn't running right there like he was the first half. A better job there of the farmers of – playing contained football there and not letting him get outside and use that speed as he goes to the left again yep. and he's there it is just There's like we just talked about that second level nice job there by huggins of getting a hand out and grabbing that he, jersey he and spun him down, down. yeah but yeah that's exactly what we just talked about was him getting into open space and so and see right here you'll see huggins get this left hand out and just kind of yeah spun him around he hits the ground hard. Yeah, right he did there. hit that ground hard with his head, back of so his head. With, with and you them, see him kind of bent over right now a little bit. Yeah, 10, 10 to 28, and it's like, okay, we're going to have to, you know, right. try to win this thing. They're going to put the ball in his hand and continue to spy him. Right. Just don't let him get, have too many of those right there. Right. But no, you're right. You said it earlier at the beginning of the third quarter. There's a big difference between playing to win and playing not to lose. And yeah. Cato's going to have to. Um, figure out what they're going to do here because Farmersville's got the momentum right now. I sure it's you. It's always rolling out to the right they side. They would prefer not to be running their. That could have been a block in the back. And there it, it was. Yeah, there's the flag. And it, even on the block in the back, he made a great play yeah. on Gonzalez, who's getting up a little slower was each that time. Cuddy? Yeah, I assure you, they don't want to put the ball in his hands right. Yeah, now. that was Cuddy Fisher. It was a great job. So what do you do? You take this penalty and move them back, or do you take? That's a no gain there. I would move them back. 
I mean, they're that's in four-down the, yeah, territory. That's what they're going to do. But, yeah, Gonzalez is – he's getting up a little slower after having his head hit and then just kind of just getting bounced around in there a couple of times. As a, well, he's ran 200 yards in the past. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> and, what, 80 of it didn't count right. on the punt. So I bet he could do those 85 steps a whole lot easier than we could. Oh, I can go down them, no problem. <laughs> I don't mean rolling. Oh. So it will be a 10-yard mark off there. Stay second down, second and 20 now. As the Foxes stay in a four-receiver set with one back, that's Jenkins in the backfield with Gonzalez. We'll He's going to be offset to the right. Two plays here before this quarter's over. Gonzalez looking at the sideline, making sure he gets the call. He's going to roll out to his right. Backside pressure. Throws it. Receiver wide open. Cody Fisher gets a handful of jersey and pulls him out of bounds at about the 26-yard line. So nice gain there on second and long is going to make it third and 11. So essentially, if we would have declined the penalty, we're back to where we were. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Gonzalez raises his leg for the snap, rolls out to his left, got a little bit of room, goes into the end zone, throws it behind his receiver. Good That's coverage. going to bring up fourth and 11 here, Tony. Yeah. And what do you do? Uh, I mean, Cato's. I, I have, obviously have no idea what their kicker can do. But he's had a strong leg on. Um, they're going to bring him in for. They're going to try this from. Forty. This is going to be forty-five yards. Yeah. Forty-four yard, forty-three, forty-four yard attempt here, but he's shown a really strong leg on some of those kickoffs, and so the good thing is, is if he misses, you get the ball right there. All right, but so he has shown a good leg. I don't leg. know that that's right in high school. Oh, is it not? I think I recall thinking that, and, and they went back to the original line of scrimmage, so we'll have to oh, keep okay. up and see. Either way. They barely get the snap off. He he made it. Wow. Hey, that cleared that bar by a yeah. sheet of paper. Yeah. So, Ivy with the 43-yard field goal. And he you know needed what? 43, and he got 43. Right. And for for both teams, for Farmers and, and Caddo, having kickers that can't yeah. do that, man, that's just a weapon. A lot of a lot of schools this size don't have. So it's they, good to see, you know, like you said, you go back to, to when we were two A and nobody was kicking the ball. <laughs> right. But so with twenty five seconds to play here in this third quarter, the Foxes extend it back out to a three score lead here, thirty one to ten. But your Farmers. About to get the ball back and showing some life here on offense. And defense. We're getting yeah, stopped. For sure. I mean, for sure. It's a total different deal than the first half. Like, if this was the way, you know, first half, you know, we're either winning or, or heck of a lot closer. But. So, Cuddy Fisher goes back with Arden Cox and Schwartz. As Ivy tees it up after. Kicking that field goal, and I'm sure got a, a lot of adrenaline going. He may kick another field goal right here because that's it's exciting for a, uh, like you said, a high school kicker just to get the chance. Yeah. He may put this one through the upright. That's what I'm saying. So, you know, at this point, you're about to be fourth quarter, down three scores, three touchdowns, and we can't run the ball like we've been doing. Like we're going to have to put right. the ball in the air. No, like yeah. We don't have enough time to yes. run the ball like, you, like we've been doing. You're right. Yeah, uh, the, the yeah that, that kind of pound and So and you need the big is, yards yep. or you need the incompletion, but yep. you've got to start controlling the clock, and it's going to be in the air. Well, and the good thing is with Arden Cox, is how many big plays has he made he, this he year? He can you know? put a 75-yarder yeah. on him. Quick. Quickly. Real quick. And so, and again, the way we kind of have pounded up the middle, if if you come out in that formation and they They're do. They're going to let you. Yeah, and they do. You know, they do try to – well, I'm saying if they do try to crowd the box a little bit, then you get that single coverage on Arden, you can take yeah. your shot. And it looks like – no, they are going to have three receivers here. Reyes is back in. Is that Reyes? Yep. Arden is on the far side. And he's got coverage and a half there. Had a little bit of help from the safety. No, I'm sorry, that was Draylon as Cuddy was in the slot there. Pickup of two. That mm, they're going to try to run another play here, which is smart. Yeah. Oh, little miscommunication there. 
flips it over the head of Cuddy Fisher, so they're actually going to get to run one more play. It's going to be third and eight here. A little bit of a busted here. play back there in the back. Yeah, row. I think that uh, Norman expected Craddock to go one way, and he went the other, and so pulled that one down and just uh, couldn't connect with Cuddy. So third and eight, really important play right here. Yeah, you're probably in four down territory. Unfortunately, you might be with being down by three scores. So you play clock getting down under 15 seconds, but they finally get the play they want in. Cuddy goes in motion, hands it to Draylon up the middle. He kicks that one out to the right side. He's got some room. So he gets That's to the – great run. Oh, that could have been a horse collar tackle the way you went down. But that's a first down there. Draylon showing some of his explosiveness. That was a good job. Yeah. You know, good clock management uh, getting yep. those plays in. Yeah, I mean – when you're down by 21, like you said, you got to put the ball in the air or you've got to run them quickly. Yeah. Right? You've got to get as many plays in as you can. And Farmers Hill, good job there of in that 20 second span, picking up an extra 25, 30 yards. So they're going to flip the field here. And by flipping, I mean they're going to move the ball literally one foot. <laughs> and Farmers Hill will take over right there at the midfield stripe. So, yeah. Again, Cato knows you need the big play. You know you need the big play, but how you go about developing so that? I think with Draylon in the backfield, you know that does give you the big play sure. pop. You know, with coming from coming out of the backfield, and this uh, time he's he and Cuddy switch again as Draylon goes out to the uh, receiver and Cuddy's in the backfield now. So they are kind of they're 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 definitely drawing up different plays here, getting the ball into different hands. And Cuddy showed some explosiveness tonight on offense. Okay, Norman takes a seven-step drop. He's got some pressure. He tries uh, to just too long for that play to develop as yeah. the uh, farmer offensive line couldn't hold off the, the Foxes there. They get a sack there for a loss of three yards. Norman comes up a little frustrated, limping so as well. He had Draylon behind the defender. He just couldn't get his footing yep. to let it fly. He had, you know, two or three seconds there of protection, but yep. he needed five on that one. Craddock goes in motion, fakes it to Craddock. Norman keeps it around the right side. Slips up inside of his first blocker there. Going to pick up about three. He's going to make it third and ten. Farmers get back to the original line of scrimmage at the 50-yard line. About a minute gone already here in this uh, fourth quarter. Norman continuing to stretch out something that's bothering that left leg. He got up a little slow after that sack. Yeah. Say so we we gotta get some plays in. Gives the offensive line their protection. Takes a snap. Nope. Fakes it to Cuddy. Looks deep and miscommunication there is there's nobody there. So it's gonna be fourth and ten. Farmers obviously in a position where they're gonna have to go for it here. And there is a flag. They're gonna call intentional grounding on this because there was nobody in the vicinity of the throw, and he was still in the pocket when he threw it. So that will be a 10-yard penalty and lost the down. It's going to make it fourth and 20. I don't know that I've ever seen a. Yeah, <laughs> it's rare, but I didn't want to He wasn't say, under distress. Right, and, and he was still within the tackle box. I didn't want to say it before they threw it in case they heard me, but, you know, they. <laughs> they only marked it five yards. We'll take that. Oh, hang on. May not be done marking it yet. No, oh, yeah, okay. So fourth and 15. He's calling for the punt team, but Coach Walker, you can never be too sure. Could be some sort of fake, but man, I mean, you got a three possession game in 10 minutes. It's, I mean, I think what this is is Coach Quinlan just putting a lot of faith in that defense. Mendoza gets it off, kicks it to the right side. Gets a nice farmer's little bounce. That's going to go out of bounds at about the seven-yard line. Great punt there by Mendoza. Yeah, that was a very good punt. So this is really best-case scenario for Coach Quinlan right now as far as putting this on that farmer's little defense is let's pin them way back there and then let's go get after them and try to get this ball back as quickly as we can. It, you know, they'll definitely be 
trying to get a turnover. At and, least get a And Caddo's going to try to keep the clock running. Right. So you're going to have. Ball's probably not going to be in there. You're probably just going to see him rolling out. Uh, if it is a throw, it's going to be a high percentage yep. throw. Yep. Uh, but Of course, it seems like most of his passes have not been high percentage. He's done a really good job <laughs> throwing the ball. Coming into tonight's game, he was completing 60% of his passes, so he's been he's been pretty accurate all year long. So that is not Mendoza in at quarterback. It's 13, isn't it? That's Jenkins, yeah. I, I kind of saw that whenever he first came out there, but, again, having a hard time seeing that far. But, um, no, that's number 13 that just handed who he handed the ball to. No, that is Mendoza. That is Mendoza. That was 10. I'm sorry, not Mendoza. Jeez. Um, Gonzalez. Sorry. I was thinking of our punter. He – it did look weird, didn't it? It yeah. looked like it was a different – from up here, it looked like a different like – they may have been in a wildcat or yeah. something. So, second and 10 here for the Foxes. Player goes in motion, fakes it to him, keep, keeps it up the yeah, middle, right and he's got a lot of room. He's gone. And he's off to the races, and I don't think we're going to be able to catch him. Dante Pearson is our best hope, and he gets him too late. He's going to throw a flag on that. Surprised he didn't. Speed kills, man. So Gonzalez goes 90 yards for the score. Yeah, once he gets past that line of scrimmage, yeah, uh, you're not stopping him. No, no, and and you know they they sent a guy in motion, and I think we might have kind of sold out on that motion guy. Yeah, it was wide open for him. You know, as soon as he faked that, uh, it was wide open. IVN. For his fifth PAT. Yep, that's going to be offsides against the Farmers. Point was good, though. Imagine this is going to be decline. Yeah, offsides against Farmers is the call. Cato is taking their field goal team off the field, so imagine they're going to decline this one. And there's a flag on the other side, too, unless it was called by both of the line judges. Let's see here. He's in no hurry to get over there. Farmers of defense leaving the field, so I think that's probably what's gonna happen here. We'll get confirmation from head referee. Going to ask if they can um, add this to the kickoff. That's my guess. It does take a lot of long time for this crew to deliberate. That's for sure. Yeah. So offsides against the farmers in decline. My goodness. Personal foul though against the farmers as well. That will be administered on the kickoff. Not sure who that was against. So that's what Coach Quinlan wants to know is what happened. Offsides on the defense. Personal foul on the defense. Yes, point is good. Yeah, not real sure what happened there. As I was trying to watch someone to come talk to Coach Quinlan, and they didn't. So... Caddo will be kicking off from the Farmersville 45 yard line, which, uh, you know, if you want to go for the onside here and really try to melt this game away, then it's a good strategy. If you want to just squib it on down there or kick it through the upright, <laughs> whatever you want to do. So Ivy tees it up. It's a Farmersville kickoff return team. Takes the field. A lot of personal foul penalties tonight. And again, frustration. Yeah. Sets in and Yeah, if it obviously if it was a closer game, I don't think you see some of that. So those sure. are some frustrating yep. frustration penalties. Yep. 
Ivy approaches, tries to kick it through the end zone, and he does. So Farmers will get it at their 25-yard line with nine minutes and 59 seconds to play in the game, down by 28. Yeah, that last 90-yarder uh, was – that was a backbreaker for sure. Yeah. Started to feel like that defense is gaining some momentum. and Whoa. But, again, just no substitute for speed. When he hit the open field, it was it was over. We're so, Draylon in the backfield again for the Farmers. Cuddy Fisher goes in motion, fakes it to Cuddy, hands it to Draylon. Going around the left side, picks his way through for a gain of about four. Farmers are already looking to the sideline, trying to get their next play in as quick as they can. Straylin will stay in behind Norman. Three receivers. As they run a double move with Arden Cox. Oh. Little pump and go there for Arden. Showed his speed there. As the Foxes didn't necessarily fall for the pump, but he still outran the defender, just not able to connect. And I, again, you talked about Norman being able to throw a, a pretty ball. That's a nice ball out yeah, there. That, just that's a long. That's a really that's long, yards. long <laughs> I mean, tight spiral there. Just yeah. yeah, that's a long one. That's a hard one to connect on. Bring up third and seven here for the Farmers. Cuddy goes in motion, hands to Cuddy, looking for some room around the right side. He's got the first down, spins down at about the 38-yard line. Cuddy brought down by Drew Bennett as they move the chains. Farmers run to the line of scrimmage to try to get their next play ran here. Draylon takes the ball. Looking for a little room. Sidesteps his way up to the 43-yard line. Another gain of five yards there on first down. Draylon's done a, a nice job tonight running the ball. Yes, he has. He's got he, – he doesn't hit the hole like Gerardo does. He's got this little sidestep Yeah, he there. uses his vision yeah. really well. Another long, deep ball there to Arden Cox. Another uh, overthrow there. Oh, they got a flag. There is a flag there, as I think. The defender felt like he was beat, and he might have reached out, and it's only natural yeah. to try to reach out and slow somebody down when they're faster than you like that. And he's so, yeah. covered him well tonight. I mean, yeah, he's he's been he's been with him. They kind of you know pretty much been a kind of a one on one. They had yep. help over the middle, uh, but he's covered him well. So the pass interference there on the Foxes, moves it 15 yards over into Fox territory. Hands off to Draylon again, bounces off the first tackler. Slips there as he made his cut to go upfield, but picks up a yard or two. Call it one. Clock continues to run inside of eight and a half minutes to play in the game. Farmers coaching staff signaling the play. Stay in that same formation with three receivers, Draylon behind Caden Norman. Norman takes the snap, fakes it to Draylon. Tunnel screen out. That's Peyton Davis. Gets his first catch of the night. He's going to get it down to the 35-yard line. Bring up third and three here for the Farmers. Inside of eight to play. As the clock, unfortunately, continues to run. Cuddy Fisher gets set. Norman takes the snap, hands to Draylon. No, he keeps it around the right side, extends it out. Going to get really close to the line to gain there as he looks like somebody might have got a handful of jersey and spun him down. While they're setting the sticks here, I'd like to say thank you to the First Baptist Church for providing breakfast to the boys this morning. Appreciate their support. I know they've hosted a couple of different events for the boys. Norman takes the first down snap, rolls to his left. Lofts one high in the air to Caden Johnson. There's going to be another flag. Caden Johnson did a really good job there of slowing down and almost leaning into that defender and drawing that flag. That's a heads-up play by him. 
Another thank you is going to go to Black Line, Black Land Glass. Easy for you to say. Yeah, no kidding. They provided the dinner tonight, which which was uh, provided by Benicius. Appreciate both of them and their support for the Farmer football team. Keep these boys fed, energized. So the pass interference penalty will move Farmersville into the red zone. So you're going to snap this one from the Fox 18-yard line. Four receivers for Norman. Looks to his left. Pulls it down. Nowhere to go. Yeah, he was trying to get, I think he was tucking to run. And yeah. But they got his hands on him and yeah. going to get a two-yard sack out of it as the Farmers run to the, side, I mean, run to the line of scrimmage again inside of seven minutes to play. Norman takes the snap, hands to Draylon. Sidesteps his way for a gain of one. Ball here by number four, Carolyn Craddock, half up by number 12. So it'll be third and 11. Again, the Farmers needing to run as many plays as possible, but got to pick up 11 yards here to continue this. It's going to be a free play here. The hard count draws him off sides. Oh. oh. That was a good job, him breaking that, that up. That was a nice play there by the defender as uh, Norman put it right on Arden Cox, who had it. Yeah. And then the defender got his hand in there and just knocked it away. You'll see right here. Right there at the end. But they should still give us our five yards. I, I don't think – I didn't see the flag. Oh, wow. So did you see a, a defensive I saw the sides? Yeah. I saw, okay. Well, I saw the guy jump. I just assumed because yeah. no, no, everyone else – I never else, saw the flag. Everyone else stood there, so I'm surprised. Okay. Goes across the middle, overthrows the receiver, and that will be a turnover on downs. So the Foxes will take over inside of their own 20-yard line with six minutes and 15 seconds to try to burn off here. Farmers rotating a few guys in in here on defense. As Gonzalez takes the field again, kind of surprisingly. Yeah, I think say I was surprised to see him yeah. come back out there as well. So one back in the backfield with him, hands it to him, looking for some room around the right side. Shut down there by that Farmersville defensive line. That's going to be a no gain there. Brought down by Mark Vasquez. Jose Acosta Jr. in there as well. Letting the clock run down a little bit. Takes it to Grant. Throws out to his receiver. Whack. That's a big hit right there. Cuddy Fisher. Nice job there by Cuddy Fisher of timing that one up and then bringing the wood when he got there. Nice play. 17 is going. Don't call that yeah. one again, Coach. <laughs> yeah. Coach, can we just throw that one out of bounds next time? I talked to Tally after a game one time this year after he got smoked on a on a pass like that. As soon as he caught it, he just got smoked. He goes, I was sacrificed. <laughs> <laughs> so. so offsides against the Farmers as we saw them sugaring a little bit, which means, you know, you're, you're showing the pressure. And I think we thought that one of the offensive linemen jumped because we continued on through the line of scrimmage. But five-yard penalty is going to make it third and seven instead of third and 12. And Caddo was throwing the ball in that play. See if they continue to throw it here. Farmers are again showing some pressure. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, another offsides. This is going to be a free, he play. Has a free play. Yep. This is, uh, this is what drives coaches crazy. Yeah. And it's not like we've had this issue all year, and then all of a sudden. Right. So another five yards. So there's a huge difference between third and 12 and third and two. And now the Foxes are looking at a third and two. And 
Gonzalez looking to the sideline. Grant stays in the backfield with him. Two receivers to both sides. Looking to create a little space here for Grant. Gonzalez looks to the right. Nice tackle again there. Still going to be enough for yep. the first down. Cuddy Fisher having a big game on both sides of the ball, but Fox is able to connect on the pass on third and two, get a new set of downs, and the clock is going to continue to run. And that it's going to be a it's going to be a, just a game of uh, trying to see how short they can make this at this point. Yeah. Coach and staff continuing to try to get as many seniors in as they can out there on the defensive side of the ball. Gonzalez William. looking down that right sideline. Oh. Tally got a hand on it. That was William Salee. He smoked. Did he? Yeah. Again. He came free, and it was wow. right at the release. I don't know, man. Why are you keeping him in there? I don't know. And the pl and the pl the game clock start stops too. Looks like they're going to say he was down before he threw it because they just marked him back. Unless it was a penalty, I didn't see, but they just marked it back to second and eleven. So maybe he went down before he threw the ball. I'm not sure there. I don't know. It actually looked like William might have got him a little late, but no flag on yeah. that. So. Gonzalez floats one out in the flats to Grant. Nice tackle there. That's Damian Gonzalez covering the flats well. Brings down the receiver. It's going to make it third and long for the Foxes. Three and a half minutes to play in the game. As they are snapping the ball pretty quick now, I was going to say, they are going to let it run down a little bit. the defensive line shifting. Gonzalez looking across the middle. That's Dante, yeah, yeah I was going to say, he threw it behind both of them. Otherwise, yeah. Dante had that one. Yeah, great coverage there by Dante Pearson undercutting that route. So the Foxes will bring on their punt team. I'd be surprised if uh, Gonzalez actually punted this one. I mean, he's still in there, <laughs> but... I wouldn't even leave him in there to punt at this point, but. They're not paying us to coach. That's true. They're not even paying us for this. Uh, I bought you some pizza. Oh, that's true. Let's see if Cuddy gets a chance to return one here. Uh-oh. Oh. Takes it on the hop. Looking for a block. Oh, oh spins my. out of it. Goes back the other way. Reverse fields and gets up to about the 38-yard <laughs> line. But there is a flag on the far sideline. Cuddy's trying to get player of the week for offense, defense, and, <laughs> and special, special teams. teams. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so the he just picked up the flag. I don't know what it was for. I think he's signaling face mask. So let's see here. So it's holding against the farmers. So it'll be a ten yard penalty there. Marked off, backs them back up to the twenty eight yard line. Farmers will offense. Three minutes to play. Looking to try to get this ball downfield as quick as possible. Cody Fisher goes in motion, fakes it to him. Norman keeps it, goes around off the right side, picks up about six yards there, seven yards on first down. He got hit pretty hard, too, as he comes up holding his yeah, hand. Yeah, this, this past two possessions have been rough on him. Yep. He's taking a beating. He's holding that left hand, which is his throwing hand. So He is tough. Yeah, he's he gets right back in there and calls the next play. Bad hand and all, he lets it fly, throws a really nice ball, but overthrows his intended receiver, Caden Johnson. So that'll stop the clock. 
make it third and four. Norman continues to squeeze on that hand a little bit. I bet he'll be wanting to use that, that left hand when we see Cato in baseball this year. <laughs> I completely see, agree. See how they do with that. Yep. Norman takes a snap, looks to the right. Hits Arden Cox for the first down. Nice throw and catch there. That'll stop the clock to move the sticks before they start it back up. As Farmers is looking to the sideline for their play. Rolling out to his left. Plants. Goes to Caden Johnson. A little underthrown there, but defender can't get to it either. Ball falls incomplete, makes it second and ten. Yeah, you've kind of felt from that one 90-yard run from Gonzalez, the energy levels really came down on yeah. the purple side of this field. And any in momentum stands, we had to that point in the press box it was just over. On the, yeah, on the sideline, yeah. But the farmers doing what they do, which is continuing to fight, and they've done that all year long. Yeah. And that's a testament to the players and the coaches both. Draylon, nice little run there. He's He's got it like you – Le'Veon Bell, if you remember him, and how we kind of stutter-stepped his yeah, way through I, the line of scrimmage. I can't say Barry Sanders because I just can't right, say Barry right. Sanders, but he's very shifty. Yeah, he really is. He's, he makes two or three moves in a really small amount of space. And he can accelerate in a sure. hurry. You know, he hadn't had a ton of running back this year. He's been more of the slot guy. Right. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, yeah. That um, that flag was a little more obvious. Yeah. Take coming out. That's not ever a good sign. No. So another personal foul. That's going to be offsetting. Actually, no, 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 no. Don't move. Move the ball back, sir. Well, yeah. they'll, they'll step on both directions. <laughs> he, it, yeah, they were declined is what he said, though. Anyway, Draylon had had a ton of ton of carries from sure. the running back position. Sure. Gerardo's done the bulk of that, but it's always exciting when he is back there to yeah, see what he can find. He's shown some, some wiggle for sure. He's just looking for a... A, a seam. A little know. daylight. Yep. yep. Draylon stays in at running back. Goes to Arden Cox, overthrows him. Might have been throwing that one away. Because I think that the first route, maybe the timing was off a little bit. Tate's back in there. Yeah. Which he needs to be. Like I said, yep. no. Get a personal foul. You need to come off the field. But cool being down a, senior, a little bit. Yeah. Uh, this game's winding down. Sure. He deserves to be on the field. Yep. There's nobody who worked harder than him or that wants it more than him. Oh, nice pass there. Oh. And that's the way the knots go. Man. Nice defense there from the Fox defender as he – Able to just get there at the last second because Caden Johnson had a step. And that was a beautiful pass yeah. from Caden Norman, but just good makeup speed right here from the Fox Sad. defender. As that it, was in the basket. Yep, it was. <laughs> KJ is not going to be happy about that. No. Neither is Caden. So fourth down here for the Farmers. Yeah, this this is – I'm not – this is – the game, the season, yeah. whatever you want to call it. I yeah. mean, it for it's some inevitable, the, the ending. But For some of these kids, it's it could be the last play of their career. Yeah. Norman rolls out to the left, gets it out to Caden Johnson, but he's going to be stopped short of the first down. Well. And so, yeah, I mean. I hope they know they've uh, exceeded expectations. Like I said, they weren't picked to win nothing. Nope. Starting the year. They have brought a lot of joy to a lot of Farmer fans and – the other word is hope, right? Yeah. Like hope for that, this program. 
the kid, the, the young kids yes. that are going football. What's that? Yep. Oh, okay, that looks that fun. looks fun again. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And you know, kind of going back, Tony, to what you and I talked about at the beginning of the broadcast about the difference between a good team and a good program, yep. and how important that is. And you know, I I would like to, you know, tell Coach Quinlan, you know, on the air how much we appreciate what he's doing here and, and the program that he's building. And um, and how much and he's doing kids, it the right way. Absolutely, you know everything is with respect. And uh, I'm not saying everybody loves everything about him, but sure. you know he certainly tries to do the right thing and treat the kids right and yes. be a father figure to all of them. Uh, so to me, that that counts for a lot uh, as this clock winds down. Well, and he's got a coaching staff that kind of emulates him. I mean, there's some really good guys out there that. Um, that you and I've talked to at a lot of different sporting events, just not at football games, because they're right. out there to support all of our farmer uh, athletes. And, and I'm proud of our our coaches. I'm proud of our. I'm really, really proud of our kids. I'm really happy for them and the success that some of these kids haven't had in four years. Yeah. Um, and now their senior season, they get to make the playoffs and have a winning record. Right. Um, and and do some stuff that hadn't been done here in Farmers in a long time. And I'm yeah. really proud of these these guys to all of you at home we want to say thanks for your support thanks for checking out the live stream sending the messages and the feedback that you do mr g and his crew are top notch man like Um, best in the state you yeah you (laughs) there was a ul competition for this we would win hands down and i appreciate them and all their effort and if you haven't ever been uh, to one of our our games and seen just the madness that goes on just to get all this. It takes hours and hours to set up and hours and hours to break down. Mr. G and Mr. Beckham and their crew, um, they do it and they get it done for you, the fans, and for our farmer uh, student body and our athletes, and we really, really appreciate them. So for those of you that are football fans at home, we'll definitely be doing this again next year, bringing a brand new team, hopefully have uh, the same amount of success, if not more. But for those of you that enjoy basketball and baseball and softball, we'll be bringing those live streams to you um, as soon as we can. We'll get that information out there to you on Facebook so that way everyone can stay uh, connected and uh, you guys can continue to support the farmers in any way that you want to. So thanks again for all your support this season. When you see one of these farmer football players walking around, make sure that you tell them how proud you are of them um, and and. Thank, their, thank them for all the effort and, and hard work they've put in. So thanks again to, use it to those of you at home for all your support. And as always, go Farmers. <laughs>